the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. Welcome back to Queen of Embers, episode 56. <laughs> I was like, is it Freddy? <laughs> I'm your game master, Daniel Fox. Uh, we've got everybody here, uh, with the exception of Tim. Tim uh, stayed home because he's sick. And we're going to just pick right up where we left off last week. As a quick reminder, uh, we do have a new player at the table. I am the new player. He's playing Eugene Thornberry, uh, our <laughs> new player who we're stepped in for Walter, as Walter is now gone. And um, Jason will stay at this until the bitter, bitter end. <laughs> until he dies, one of the two. Yeah, one of the off my character and replace me. Yeah, you know. With a younger, hotter model. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so a lot happened last game I session. Let's Porsche. I'll be upset. That's right, a Porsche. <laughs> um, what happened? What happened? Uh, I went through 17 shots. Uh, oh, God. Uh, I went through two fate points. I went through two fate points. I thought a horse. Two fate points. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Oh my I gosh. almost went through a fate point, but I <clears throat> got high as fuck instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fed a horse. Uh huh. You did. I did. Mm -hmm. um, and then I <clears throat> you, you, tried to push a guy off a ledge <clears throat> and hard failed that. Ooh. I tried to oh, roll yeah, a you guy. hard failed that. I tried to roll a guy off a dock. That didn't work either. All the stars aligned for me to <clears throat> shove that guy so he would eat gravel. And, uh. Nope. Yeah, but if you didn't later <coughs> see a man about that horse, that's true. Then we would have never taken that boat. That's true. And we would have left Matthew behind. Yeah. It's a good thing I mentioned it. it yeah, I you, you, like, you did. Because I think we would have found a different way out. Because we were then the willing to risk our lives for that horse because it's a very important horse. <laughs> it's a VIH. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've been through a lot. It's a, it's a very important steed. <laughs> We've been a lot through a lot to get into Matthew. Yeah. So Tried what to really? Heal him and it didn't work. So what yeah. else happened? It's just taking your uh, damn time. So during that during that fight, we well, hold, let's uh, talk about the setup first. I think we're okay. missing some important parts. Well, the, what happened? So how did you get to the dock? We were we were kind of on our way slash chased there by a, uh, another wagon of inquisitors. And they had a, a puckle gun on the back of it as well. We were going down the switchback, and they they trapped us by putting fire on the oil and fire on the ground on the switchbacks, mm -hmm. so that we couldn't make our way back up. So we were trapped on these docks uh, with a bunch of people that were hostile to us, uh, members of the Inquisition. You kind of shoot them first. They're just asking questions. It's an inquisition. Yeah. We're inquiring. Uh, no, so. they're not us. They're hostile. What do you taste like butter? I think they were inquiring with their cat and nine tails. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, and because uh, Terran can only recall one, maybe two tails at a time, uh, he just wouldn't have it. So. <laughs> I don't know about the rest of them, but um, it was enough to... Uh, and, and plus somebody wanted to... Use their uh, new toy. Yeah, use the Baroness. Yeah. So, th so there are some some fate points. Then, what happened? Start. We'll start with Harper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not question mark. Uh, yeah. I, I fixed your card, by the way. Yes. <laughs> like, Everybody question. I kept like, yeah. hey, this is not right. I, I, I saw that. It took me so long. Anyway, uh, so Harper spent his first fate point when the carriage exploded to keep. His guns and gunpowders. Oh, that's right, because they exploded. they threw all the bottle bombs on it right. and set the thing aflame. Right, so I, it ran exploded over like four times. That might have been fair. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, and uh, so that was my first fate point, and then we got into a big scuffle with a bunch of uh, zealots. And I got exploded on with dice. I think you got like a 32 or something yeah. like that. Um, 
but by comparison, he also missed you twice. He did. I almost had the barest of margins. Another, yes. Yeah, they missed you. The Puckle Gun had a, what, an 80 something percent chance to hit? Yeah, me? missed you twice. Like 89 and an 89. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Harper, yeah, he was living on the edge there. It's not about being good, it's about being lucky. It is. Better be lucky than good. So, what about with Terwin? What? How did he lose his fate points? Uh, Terwin thought to himself, "Surely they may, you know, only move me down one or two steps." Uh, well, actually, Adam thought that when it came time to parry, and he thought there's a bigger threat that I need to parry later, and should have parried it because uh, we we then went on a trip together. We thought we'd uh, tour the uh, the the city known as Explosion City. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, I don't know if I'm it. <laughs> Depends on the side. I don't the know. I mean, yeah, like <laughs> I've had fun there before, but this time, <laughs> if you're um, the one leading the tour, in yeah. retrospect, it was fun. But at the time, I didn't think I was having fun. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, no, I got uh, knocked down to Grievous, uh, and then when I drew the injury, um, I drew uh, Vitreous Hemorrhage. Is that the one that kills you? Yeah. Yeah. And Arterial so, spray. Arterial spray. And yeah. then I, I spent a fake point to ignore the injury. Um, uh, so I was left there at Grievous. And um, uh, I was I was not uh, doing very well. I was surrounded by like seven people. Yeah, six or seven. Um, and so they were all taking attacks on me. And I, I was actually getting quite lucky with how many misses there were. Yeah. Um, and then I one of them, poorly. yeah, one of them did like uh, fourteen damage to me, which is one above my threshold. And <laughs> then, yeah, that uh, brought me down to slate, so I had to use the second one. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it was uh, it was really rough. But uh, that last Inquisitor is almost seemingly implacable. Like he was like a, couldn't yeah, take him off his feet. Yeah, um, and. It was just like, as soon as um, he was off his feet, because we were using multiple attacks, That's right. I was able to take him out in one round. That's right. Um, so, uh, multiple attacks while fun? <laughs> yeah, so so the so the battle continues on with some really close calls, I think, from other people, too. <laughs> yeah. You, know, yeah happened, you got pretty messed up there. What happened with uh, Eugene? Um, so he, here's the guys on the boat. And uh, decides to follow him out because I mean, if they're raiding his boat, that can't be good. And then sees this lot show up, guns ablazing, and assumes a uh, kind of the logic of the enemy of my of the enemy is my friend. Mm-hmm. So he's like, "All right, well, I can't take on all these heavily armored guys and all their fanatics, so I'll stick it out with them and then hope for the best." And so he sees the the guy up on the building top shouting out orders. Decides to try and sneak up there and silence him to kind of maybe make some confusion. Hardcore whiffs that, and then mechanically speaking, ends up in a five hour long rapier fight <laughs> for his life. <laughs> yeah, and uh, whew, I was so t- I, was, I think it was like two steps away, uh, one step, two steps away from being dead. Yeah, uh, and like the first hour in, so every single roll was pins and needles of just like this is it, this is where I die, this is where the dice explode and I die. Uh, and then yeah, it was like a. F- Five hour rapier fight, finish him right at the end, and then I was like, go for the next guy! Leap the building, and he's gone. Yeah. So, what about uh, with Lisa? What what happens during this battle? I know it was pretty pitched for you, too. Uh, uh, well, Lisa already walked in, kind of injured from uh, the previous fights <clears throat> that were in the oh, catacombs. That's right, oh my gosh. So, she, she was pretty uh-huh. down to start with. Um, and then she got. She got to hang on to the wagon a couple times as we ran over some people, but then got thrown off of it, and she Oof. tried to take one of the guys off of uh, the pier with her, but she couldn't, unfortunately, roll them off with her. So then she got up and jumped back up to try to help with the puckle gun, and uh, then it ended up exploding while she was on it. Oh, so God, that's right. She got thrown against the wall, and she pretended to be dead for a second, and then she remembered the uh, suit-stained prophet. For once, she got the name right. And then decided to, <laughs> yeah, decided to try to pretend to be a prophet, and she managed to convince two of the zealots that she was for a little bit. That's right. And got them to fight for them. And then, uh, yeah, after that, she it, like her crossbow has been destroyed at this point, so she grabbed one of the cat and nine tails from them, and... 
That's where she sits right now, which is one point above dead. <laughs> what about uh, with uh, Warren? Warren? Warren didn't, question I, don't, mark? I don't think Warren got any, received any damage. He did a lot of help, Lucky. helping people up and removing horses and from the carriage as they were slain. And, Good support role. Very um, vital stuff. Yeah. Didn't yes. really do any damage, although That's I tried quite fine. a bit, but you should you know, consider I, a trade school for that. Removing <laughs> dead horses from carriages. Animal <laughs> handling, so <laughs> The, uh, yeah, the support stuff is always important. Oftentimes it goes overlooked, because imagine what would happen if uh, Bandicoot was trying to turn that carriage around without the horses still stuck on there. Right. <laughs> it was like, you would have to deal with, deal with a lot more Inquisitors. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, I think as you learn, like, trying to get that Inquisitor, it's suddenly because he and all the Zealots, as they kind of waded in toward Terrawin, like, it was just mm-hmm. a, a tough fight. Sometimes it's good oh, if, for and, someone with a yes. less combat-heavy make like build, like, Expend the actions that need to be expended to get, get, get things done. Yeah, Terran thought he was going to die that night, and he was going to make sure that it took that he took their attention as long as he could, so that the other people could survive and the mission could keep, go on. Mm-hmm. And I think it's the, this is the very first game session where, where we've <coughs> ever lost that many fate points in one game session. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. Four was fate it just me and Adam that lost fate yeah. points? Yeah, I was yeah. close. Did Tim lose any? Uh, no. Yeah. I dosed laudanum twice. That's the only reason I didn't yeah. have to. That's right. Um, so you so the battle ends at least it, it's in, it's waged in your favor and there's some survivors including a squire named Silas Garka. Like what happens from there? We get on the boat. Um, well, well, hold on. Wait, Before wait, we get to that, Tim let's talk about up his kill count. Let's talk about Eugene for a moment. <laughs> yes, Eugene comes down to uh, somewhat greet you all. Assuming after the shouting that went on. Uh, between uh, Terwin, uh, that y- you thought you saw uh, Jonah, mm-hmm. and he assumed you did, so he shouts that he's going to come for Jonah. So it was a big confusion during the fight, <laughs> which clears up at the end that Jonah was never there, and we're both wrong. Uh, so he comes down to like kind of find out why you guys are there, and also looking for Jonah. Um, kind of discusses with you guys right as we come under fire from a second puckle gun or from that same puckle gun that entire time and uh, we end up with this large amount of prisoners that we're kind of debating what do we do with them what do we not do and then you guys ask what you know like where did I come from what's on the boat still Uh, which I tell you that there's a a horse I'm supposed to deliver Uh, and it turns out that that horse is a a VIH very important horse and uh (laughs) Ends up, we, we decide we're going to put out the lights and grab the, I uh, can't remember the name of the, the guy we grabbed. Silas. Silas. Darka, the squire. Because all the other zealots were, threads were cut and thrown, thrown in the uh, yeah. water. I never remember that. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. originally we killed yeah. them because we didn't have room on the dinghy, but then we took the big boat, so really in I the think, end. I think Bannister just really wanted to kill them. Banneker wanted some sweet, sweet revenge. Yeah, like I said, really bad die roll. He was upset with the KDR count, with me being at the top of the list, and then him being not at the top of the list. Yeah. The only thing I did was when he critically failed, I managed to knock the Pab Templar yeah, over. So I'm pretty sure the only person I killed was the Templar because of help. Yeah. So this all goes down. You escape on the ship. As you're leaving the harbor onto the Axwater River at night in the winter, like a shot from the puckle gun strikes something and explodes yeah. on the off on the ship or off near the ship, which you would strongly suspect to be probably kegs of gunpowder, um, maybe that Jonah brought cargo that was unloaded. Mm. Um, but Banneker basically manned the captain's wheel, and you went across river into a small, quiet cove, and. It's actually where we begin our story. It's early morning, and you can hear the water lapping at the side of the of the ship. It's cold, unsurprisingly, being that it is winter and it was snowing the night before. There's snow, but half an inch buildup on the deck from the, from the, from the night. The wind outside is whipping violently the sails. The this, this storm has not lifted, and the boat kind of sloshes back and forth 
with the wind. You all come top deck, uh, some of you eating hot stew, others freshly bandaged, some still in a uh, laudanum addled haze. Oh, and real quickly, uh, as of tonight, we are going to discontinue multiple perilous sensitive attack actions. Okay. So we can mark that off of our. Um, oh man, that'll save me so much rolls. Um, so. Yay. We'll go into probably <laughs> another video to talk about what we learned, what we liked, what we didn't like. Yeah, it was worth it. We'll it's go into it later. Yeah. Uh, what we liked, what we didn't like, it'll come later, but not today. We're just discontinuing that for now. So you are bandaged, rested. Wounded egos, some wounded physically, yeah. others a bit rattled, and you come face to face with Eugene. Banneker has not yet come up. He stayed up that evening um, to ensure the boat was prepared for the winter in case another winter storm came. Um, but uh, it's very, very cold here, very chilly. You're, from where you're at, you can see like a cold fog layering over the Axwater River, and only the sh grayish shape of Kale Tyrion, of that great bluff-bound city, can be seen across the river. You're on the you're on the east side, uh, on the east side of the shore, in a small cove. The trees rattling against one another, bare of leaves, rattling like skeletons. <laughs> uh, the leaf bare trees of the forest kind of rattle and move with the forest. You can see snow drifts along the bank. Uh, the water's not frozen, obviously, because it's early winter, but that first snowstorm of the winter came pretty quick. It is, it is past the winter solstice now, too. It's going to be year 224 soon. Party. So, now that we've got some restiness and our minds are a bit clearer, our bodies are a bit healthier. Who the fuck are you again? <laughs> uh, he strikes like a, a very rigid pose. Eugene Thornberry. I am uh, an archivist for the... I uh, uh, cannot pronounce what I thought. Elornite. Elornite. Like Elornite. Archivist Elornite. for the Elornites. Under Master Hexenstan. But you don't seem thrilled by that information. I thought you were working with him. Who is working with him? Yeah. Well, then I don't see the problem. Well, beforehand, he wasn't breathing down our neck. <laughs> no offense, but... What are you doing here? I'm sent here to assist the Dufresne's. Dufresne Agency. It's to make sure that the the, governor, the Baroness can succeed her mission. Hexen Stern got a problem with our methods or something? There is a letter that Hexen Stern gave you that is sealed. Uh, he gave me a letter to, I believe, turn in to you on this. Let's have it. All right, just a moment. Rummages around an absurdly stuffed pack and hands it over to you. Listen, I don't like low nights. But that's not why I'm upset you're here. You saw what happened. Well, I, that wasn't my doing. I didn't bring them aboard. I, I, I didn't show up on a ship full of fanatics and bring them into port to kill you. All right, all right. You jump into conclusions. Better than contusions. That's true. About a few huh. myself. I to, actually know what that means. To, but to be fair, Talon, you mm -hmm. did just start a conversation with I hate all the lore and all you no, no, no. talk about <laughs> jumping to No no no. I'm not a fan. Alright. I used to want to hate them. Yeah, it's about true. Accurate. No. What I'm saying is I wish you were in a better place. Not in such danger. Somewhere warmer? Yes. That'd be nice. That's why... That's why I'm upset. Oh, so you're not a cold weather man. He, he, as he's talking, <laughs> he breaks this... He breaks the waxen, waxen seal upon the... Upon the um, scroll. And you can see that the same symbol that's kind of on the scroll is also on the pen on Eugene's lapel. And... The words, you want to speak them aloud? Yes. Uh, it, while, while I'm reading them first, because I need to read them first before I can try and sound them out, like, uh, 
like just kind of look down, glance up at him, look down, glance up at him. I'm like, you've got the best sense of humor of any alone I've ever, I've ever met. Uh, so yeah, I'm ready. To... So you you he paraphrases another what the what the what it's in the scroll one. It seems to be kind of a you know an excuse like sorry we had to ferry you out of Durendal so quickly. The Baroness is hot to ensure that Rosalia Mansfield closes down this deal. Um, it's important that you keep Rosalia Mansfield alive. You cannot you can't begin to understand how important her life is for ensuring the improper cessation. Secession. Uh, know that you know I'm sending my warmest wishes and my most apt pupil to help to assist you in this endeavor. I'm also sending him with the horse. As well as a, as well as an additional sachet of crowns to get you, to get you started in Kale Tyrion. Um, you know, give everybody my best, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You have the, you have the Baroness on your side. We believe in you. You've got this. Uh, and it, the letter ends there. Respectfully yours, Master Rasputin Hexenstern, Belgard. Yeah. It's clear that within the letter that yeah. Hexenstern didn't know right. that Rosaya was dead, but it feels it almost feels like a gut punch. When right. You read it. The harbor feels terrible. <laughs> yeah, he ties the anchor oh. himself, just throws it over. Very does I mail you. Uh, <laughs> so, so before Karen does pass this along, he's he's gonna say, you know, it's interesting. It seems like Hexenstern honestly cares what we think about him. Like, legit cares what we think about him. Listen, listen to this. And then I, uh, I paraphrase. I, I, I read exactly what the word mm-hmm. says with mm-hmm. that, that general para- yeah. paraphrasing. Yeah. Like, it's clear from the words that it, they're, they're earnest. Yeah. <laughs> well, Master Hexenson is a generous man and quite noble of heart, so he does care. About your well being. He did you will so. for the learner's pupils. He is a friend of mine, you know. Oh no, I love the learner. Yeah, learner, learner, that, that guy's good. Oh, I said his pupils. Lorna's followers. Yeah. To, to be seen. <laughs> well, I like a Lorna's more than these fox. Well, these guys are batshit crazy. Yeah. Um, but to state, he is a friend of mine. Oh, huh? well. Yeah. You choose your own friends. Yeah. Like. I mean, if. I take it I do not have said bag of crowns. They're on the horse. Oh, thank God. <laughs> that means they're mine, but... <laughs> Matthew, what'd you bring me? So... It was right. crowning achievement. Well, did we tell you yet about Rosalia what? Mountains Field? I believe I already knew that going into Like, I found out mid-transit. That's right. I have already heard of the unfortunate situation. How did it happen Right, so we didn't tell you, but you know. Yeah, well, yes. Okay. Um, Rather well meaning. informed. He isn't a Lauren after well, all. Well, okay, you would have, <laughs> no, you would have had to have learned when he arrived, because he arrived with the guy. No, no, right? no. Like, like, that's... There's a long river trip, a lot, taking the long way around through Ro, the Rovain Girdle North, uh, through Cauldron Lake and Old Bork. It's probably where you heard. It's where you would have heard it in Old Lork, which is north in Cauldron Lake. Well, so did you make two trips then? Because the man was only dropped off a few days ago. Right. Well, they've been they've been in it port does, for about five days. It doesn't matter. He knows. Well, yeah, I mean, he, knows. he knows. All right. Well, because the lore nights. Yeah. Well, how, how did it happen? And so a bunch of red. Mm-hmm. Uh, red effers? No, red earrings. Uh, led us to chase after other suspects. And we was to believe that it was the uh, uh, Baron that was under threat. When it was actually Rosalia that was under threat. Ah. So. Your travel companion. That's right hunch, happened. wrong location. Right. We was... Uh, Mm. Worrying about protecting the Baron, but naturally we didn't protect Rosalia. Ah, most we, unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, Rosalia told us herself that that was the mission. She, she said we need to protect him. Well. So, well, I suppose now the real th- question is where can we find Jonah? The only. Mm-hmm. 
clue we have is that he might be with uh, Father. What was the name? Bartlesby. Bartlesby. Well, he be with Bartlesby, but wherever that is, I don't know. I don't know. Well, Jonah's a good friend of ours. I wouldn't say he's just like family, but I mean, I want to find him. If he's here in this city, then I feel I feel like I was abandoning him if uh, we didn't at least go back for one more look see. And since we is going to be needing to go back for another look see, we can try and be quiet. And I hope that we can be quiet. And not get into another. That was, that was worse than some of the, the skirmishes during the war. I believe the word you're looking for is altercation. Sure. Yeah, uh, like Terwin spaced off for a bit there after he said the word war. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, well, we ain't got the carriage, so we ain't gonna go trampsing through town. I mean, yeah, I'll have Matthew with me, but you can be quiet when he needs to. Terran starts looking at everybody, and he's not trained in heel all, nothing like that. But yeah. he's, he's trying to surmise, like, do I believe that my people could handle another fight? And so, above board, what's your current damage condition? Everybody, we'll lightly, start with Eugene. Lightly. Unharmed. Moderately. Lightly? Moderate. You know, we're in better shape than I thought, than I thought we, I mean, I, I can kind of internalize that. Yeah, okay. and plus, I mean, if it wasn't for Warren's or, warm right. stew, it yes. wouldn't, that wouldn't be the case, nor his medical expertise. All right. I, uh, say, Warren, you got any, uh, logins on you? Yeah, we need to restock your supply. I used up. I used up all my bandages. That I gotta get make some more. I got some money here. Reckon if we're going back into the city, probably should make some more. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, whenever we get an opportunity, we need to resupply. Well, we might just have to make do with what the here is on the boat. Yes. I mean, once we leave it, nobody else is coming back for it. It seems. So why not? Pillage the boat, as it were. I've got uh, plenty of other uh, healing expendables and whatnot, but uh, on the main one. Is there a captain's quarters? There is, but uh, what you find inside are a series of empty bottles uh, of Hmm. wine that line all the shelves. Uh, Clearly, uh, Jonah had some really strange... (laughs) His bed spreads are, are, How is that? are nasty and gross. <laughs> like the man's been living, and you know, he has a couple piss pots nearby. But the, but you kind of you kind of stop when you see that there is like in a series of like papers and coal. There are these images uh, that immediately bring you back to the lonely island. The things we saw. The th- yes, yes. You can see that he's kind of drawn them in his own personal journal. Hmm. Well, he didn't even go really on the island. He just was there, and they ran back to him, right? That's right. What are those? I'm going to gesture at the images. I'm going to quickly take the images up. And... If I told you, you wouldn't understand. And can I take a look at them? <laughs> Try me. I'm quite a learned fellow. Lisa's going to back away from them. Well, they're shadow creatures that appear during a ritual and kill a whole bunch of people. That's preposterous. That doesn't exist. I told you you wouldn't you understand. Would. See? No, See? Yeah. Aha! You Aha. must be mistaken. Surely it was figures in cloaks, the low to the ground. Perhaps a couple of midgets. You see, he told you you wouldn't understand. No, I understand. I believe he's wrong. Unfortunately, as a believer in logic, I would agree with you, but... I'm sure the explosion from the from the carriage has just gotten to him. He he emerged from a burning wreckage not half a day ago. Right, unhit, unskinned. Yes, well, I'm just saying maybe a log to the head could have addled him. You've had your fun. I had fun too. Let's move on. Wait, I'm gonna take a look at these. I'm gonna sift through the the papers. Can I like look 
over his shoulder. Oh yeah, I mean they seem to show. At first, there's this image of this island that he's drawn with surprising accuracy. Like, it looks like it's well drawn. You would not expect that from Jonah. And it seems to depict this dark, this shadow, these shadows over the island. And on the island are these robed figures that he's taken blue paint and painted across the hood with his thumb. On each of them, which seems to depict what you'd seen with uh, Professor Hostorf. This is not, this is not you wouldn't know this, but um, Hostorf, mm -hmm. when he originally came. Um, and then it shows another return to the island as well that's done from a different perspective and a different cub. And that dark shadow that's over the island, the figures and the hoods are gone, but the shadow over the island seems to be not cloud cover, but something else, like something phantasmal that is drawn into the clouds, like very kind of something. Remember, he said he saw something when you guys got back on the boat, but you didn't inquire about it. But it's clear that you and you knew that Jonah was, he was drunkard before, but mm -hmm. he's clearly touched. Like, you know, he, 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 he had a lot of waking nightmares when you're on the ship with him. Uh, he was clearly disturbed by something, but he didn't talk about it. These are no more than the, the sketchings of a, of a drunkard. A man out of his gourd, if you will. He, he must have done horrible things on the seas. Listen and here. You're hovering. <laughs> well, let me get a good gander at these. You, you're with us right now. Yes. And you're speaking to us as if we trust you. Now, what you did yesterday was admirable. But you gotta earn it. You gotta earn our trust. Oh, so how right. you react, how you react right now, is a good way to show that. All right, I will believe your shadow creatures exist until there's proof otherwise that they do not. All right. Maybe you don't know this of your patron, Hexenstein, but you do know that he had the ability to somewhat <laughs> tell the future. Well, that is yes. the words, right? He predicted the Baroness's assassin, assassination in the stars. Correct, but you have trouble believing that there could be things of supernatural nature that well, we Suseus saw. Suseus have always exist. Some people are just a bit more sensitive than others to premonitions, but... <laughs> it's funny, full a man on a manifestations of creatures that man deny reality. A man of education that denies things that have already been proven. I have a great regard for Master Hexenstern. Mm -hmm. But Jonah has not impressed me thus far. No Jonah's offense. Jonah's not the one speaking of the things we see in those paintings right at this moment. And I yeah. admit that you all seem, with your wits about you, with explosions and blood loss and injury, it's quite a possibility you believe what you saw. I'm just saying it may not have been what you saw. Right. All right. That's fine. You know what? Whatever. Let's move on. I'm not here to convince people of my truth. You have the book, Warren. So put Jonah's journal, Jonah's journal on your, on your character, sh your character sheet. Leads us to our next portion of, what do we do now? All right. So here's what we do. We go and we look for the unimpressive man. Not Father Bartleby. No, Jonah. Oh well, well I you might find one with the other. Exactly. Yeah, Jonah means. seems to be laying low. Perhaps a, a cleric might be a little bit easier to find. A holy man. Did he say where he's <laughs> going before he left? <laughs> Said if he didn't come back, that's where he would be. Is with Father's bot Father Bottlesby. I flipped to the end of the journal, see if they, he left any notes about that. <laughs> Flip to the end. Get book from Booker. Is what it says. Has Booker had uh, to what's the name? It was Booker's address. Yeah. Uh, 2 one two b Booker Street, yeah. 22, or 221B Booker Street. 221B Booker Street. He said he was headed to, to the Booker yeah. Street, to the book, the book. It says, right. me, it says, it says, it says, meet Booker, Booker ain't around, see Father Bartlesby at uh, the mm -hmm. Laura Knight Library. So, mm -hmm. he, he headed towards Book Shop, and then up to Bartlesby. That's right. And we so we know his itinerary, right? We saw, some, we saw some boot steps pointing away out of the back door. 
into an alleyway. Well, you really think we're going back the way we came? No. But we gotta dock this boat somewhere. <clears throat> Surely there's more than one dock. There's only one dock in Elmeron's Gate. As you consult your local map, I believe somebody has. <laughs> hey, now there's only, there's only the one dock. So I gate. would say the better course of action is. Uh, do I believe we can might be able to like dinghy across the river? Absolutely, you could. I think Does it's boat have any dinghies? Yeah, yeah. There's two. I yeah. say we just leave the larger vessel here and just take the dinghy across. Now, uh, is Elmarin's gates? completely surrounded by walls so that if we dinghy across that we'll just be at a wall. We had to get out somehow. Yeah, you had to get out somewhere. Um, no, it's not walled off on the you'd have to cr- probably crawl on the seawall or the water the river wall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, Unless uh, you went back to the dock. Yeah. Alright, so But you imagine there the, the the point is is that there are probably other docks you could go to in a dinghy, but if you went there in his ship Ah, no. Okay. His ship has that to be docked. Yes. Whereas mm-hmm. you can just take your rowboats up, you know, any damn where you want, and then make your way into the city. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But remember, all of Almeron's gate is surrounded by a blockade. Mm-hmm. Is a block. You don't know this, of course, Eugene, but for those who are who know about mm-hmm. Kiltirian, it's been blockaded off by order of the Inquisitor. So we go. From leaving. We're coming in. We've got a blockade to deal with, but I still think that, yeah, your idea of dingying up would be easier to do than trying to come back up on the dock where they know we left. Can you navigate this district? What do you know of it? Um, would I know a good route looking at the map to try and get to the archivist library? <clears throat> so... So yes, uh, there are a few landmarks on this. Foremost is a place called the Lyceum. Mm -hmm. The Lyceum is the foremost center for Eloranite study for archivists before they graduate to become a logician. Logicians then go to the the Eloranite library literally across the street from the Lyceum, the Library of Eloran. So the Lyceum is where Eloranites go to, for their archivist training, and you spent some time there yourself. Well, um, most directly, probably the Lyceum, which once we make the harbor, depending where we put in, could be any number of streets, but uh, across the street from that is the actual archivist library. So one way or the other, it's, it's all in the same area. We can find them at the Lyceum, which is where most lower end archivists would spend their time I've been there myself then the other across the street uh, the library itself one one of the two he should be in if he works if he's there so sorry to clarify the archivist library is where the Lorenites go for training and then when they become a grammarian gotcha. or logician they go to the Lyceum the Lyceum is one of the primary places of study for all Lorenites in the known world Would I, I could go in and not be out of place and perhaps locate this father's, Father Bottlesby and ask him out for tea. And normally that'd be a good idea, <laughs> but I just want to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. So, during an inquisition where they are burning all books yes. and, and putting paint across all words, Yes. You want to go to a library to blend in as someone who would be attending that library. Well, I mean, surely there are works they deem necessary to keep around. No. Surely there's somebody there who stops them. No. Maybe a librarian. I, I can't Maybe. have to at least scope the place out. I mean, worst case oh, scenario, that's the if we get there. That's the one we got to go with. So what would you say if I said we was going to go to this library... And if the, and if it's possible, we're going to try and stop some people from ruining some books. I would be on board with that. Would you let me read them? Depending on the book, yes. Not all knowledge is meant to be gained. 
That's right. That's what I thought. Spoken like a true lord. Mm -hmm. Well, some knowledge is dangerous. And some of it's wrong. Just because it's written doesn't mean it doesn't have worth. But some can be wrong. And some can be dangerous to others. And some can be far-fetched. Some may spread tales that aren't true. Looks at the paper slightly. All right, so so what you're saying is then, uh, if everything goes hunky dory, then we get this library buried somehow secured, and all that. Then we need to have ourselves a little bit burning because we need to burn the dangerous ones. Yeah. I didn't say that. Oh. Not really? once did I say we burn books. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on from this conversation. Um. Well, so we we need to go to the library to search for um, Jonah. Yeah, we need to see a man about a book. Okay. I've seen plenty of books. But do we want to take up a little time. bit more time to rest, or do we want, do we need to go like sooner rather than later? Listen, if Jonah's in the sea and he's held up somewhere, a whole day can mean the the difference of life and death. Even if you don't come across any Inquisitors, you could be without, without water. Well, also think they were actively looking for him. They came down to his ship. That's which right. means every minute, but they are continuing to yeah. do so. So as much as I want to rest up another day, I don't think it's an option. Correct. I mean, you're the one that's worse for wares. I'm not long for this life. Not with that Debbie Downer of an attitude. You foresters seem to be pretty well stocked. I mean, they haven't cut down most of your trees. I mean, you, what? The gods have deemed that my death is to, be is to be violent. That's what happens when your last name is Forrester.
So we just left off at the discussion around how to get into the city. Yeah, and uh, well, I think we should just take that dinghy. We should find a suitable spot. It's morning, isn't it? Right. Yes. Well, we got the fog, right? Perhaps we should load up with fishing gear from the boat. Make it look like we're out for a morning catch. They've stopped all traffic on the river because of winter. I mean, it's not a bad idea. But as soon as they see our fishing poles and our chainmail and brigandine, I think that's going to send a mixed message. Perhaps put your chain and brigandine into a net or bag. Keep a fish or two on top of it. You don't necessarily just unbutton this or unfasten this. Well, I mean, no, you don't. You gotta do this whole thing where you gotta bend over and like bring it yeah, up yes, over I've your shoulders. Yes, sh- I've and, seen like, it. The, the shimmy, the <laughs> yeah. shimmy. Yes, I, I know. <laughs> but too well. It'll be easier to get into shore if we get stopped and you're not wearing a regalia fit to kill a man. All right. Eugene almost seems to shine and sparkle with all of his I do. <laughs> nice fineries he's wearing and his gilded sword and his... Uh, gilded sword, gilded shield, uh, custom-fitted quilted armor. All right, you want to put everything in bags. What do you want to do? I say we just head over and get the job done. Yeah? Well... No pussyfooting around it, just do it. I was going to say our best bet is to sneak in quietly, but honestly, I don't think... Uh, considering the state of those zealots and such that we saw um, on the docks, I don't think they'd simply go, Oh, fishermen, and leave us a bee. That doesn't seem to me like that would be their motive. Maybe all the modus operandi is different, and different this morning, but I doubt it. How do they feel about drinking? I can't imagine they like it. Everyone's got to do it. Well, I imagine they think it uh, some sort of sin, don't they? I don't know. Uh, We have one here. We can ask them some questions. I mean, I see... It depends on whether you're a bigger fan of the steward, the martyr, the learner. I can't keep them all straight. Well, we could make it under the guise if we empty a barrel and then bring all those empty bottles that we went out to see to kick the habit and join the religion. All right, for you, so you're for subterfuge, you're for getting it done. What? Stealth. Subterfuge. Right. So I tried to do before we decided to take a big fuck off wagon with yeah. a gun. Oh on boy, it. I was excited. <laughs> I mean, well, I got the job done. Yeah. Oh man, did that thing do its job. All right, well, you won't. I'm just wondering how we're all going to fit on the dinghy with Matthew. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Horses can swim. <laughs> <laughs> Through ice cold water. I'm kidding. We're not taking Matthew. It would be silly taking one dinghy. Unless it's like a really big dinghy. But anyway, it'd be ridiculous. <laughs> it's a flat raft. <laughs> it's called a sloop. So, That's you... enough horse and raft, but yeah. Oh Did you God. want a big nose? I mean, I mean, it does not seem to be uh, water compliant, so uh, with safety regulations and whatnot. Hey, so, see who uh, you did I it think, before. I think OSHA uh, yeah. has uh, some bylaws yeah. about this. I saw you do it I before. Mean, That's the only reason. Animal Humane Society does not endorse well, this episode. I mean, that <laughs> Horse <boat>. brutality. <laughs> that boat was within jumping distance, though. Uh, we are not within jumping distance of shore here. Well, we all know that Matthew and water don't mix too well. Well, so what will you do? Last time it rained, it's going by. So seriously, like, no, subterfuge is fine, but I think we should ask our uh, new friend, as I, like, more, not that new friend, but the uh, the other one, the right. squire and the, the squire and the and the galley, the squire yeah, and the galley. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You already know if he's left here at Banneker, he's probably going to end up dead. He'll be floating in that water. What do we need from him? The information what the fuck's going on here. Alright. He's the first person we can ask. You wanna ask him? They're I'm burning, not that great in interrogation. They're burning books and clearing the knowledge. I don't know what more we need to I know. could talk to him. A little specifics maybe? Like uh 
Who's your daddy and what does he do? You're a bad person. I know, I know. <laughs> well, if <laughs> you seem to be good at asking questions. Right, I thought you were the question asker. You trained at it? Yeah. You said you were a bailiff, right? Bailiffs know how to ask questions. Well, I mean, I can. I'll ask him nicely. That's not typically Is your fist how called I nicely? Questions. No. Well, it should be. All right. If you would like, I can get the answers. It may not be the nicest way, but I can. Well, he did try to kill us, so... He did try to kill us. And so if he walks out of this with his life, then he'll be lucky. So, yeah. You don't have to be nice. All right, then. What do we want to know? Uh, Once again, they're burning books because they don't like knowledge. I don't know what else right. they need. Um, Ask them if they've gotten to the point where they're clearing out the... Um, Lyceum. Lyceum. Yeah. Yes. The Lyceum in the Archivist Library. If they've hit that location yet, what kind of patrols maybe they have on it. Where's their stronghold at? So also, we don't go is there, there an ulterior, uh, ulterior objective on this mission? Is book burning their sole priority, or do they have a secondary mission? Well, he may not be high enough to know that, but we can try. Squires here a lot. Mm. Nice to normally talk more than they should. Alright, well... Particularly those they trust, and you, you gotta trust your squire. Right. Uh, Servants should be seen, not heard, I, so I they think, listen quite well. I think we should be asking where the bookbinder is. Booker. Booker. I have a good feeling that he's probably dead. But yeah, well, we'd be well, good to know. I want to know what he knows. Ask him where, ask him where Jonah is, ask him where, the, where Booker is. Alright. That's All right. the most important thing. Yeah. And then ask them about patrols, particularly on the sides of the river. That way we can ascertain whether or not taking a dinghy is the best and whether or not we should go for the armor of subterfuge. I mean, because if they're going to attack fishermen, then there's no bleeding point. Alright. Sounds good to me. Well, uh, Do you mind if I join you? If you would give me a moment. I need to prepare myself. All right. Sometimes you have to get in the right mindset to be able to ask these questions. Yeah, so it's like, uh, you know, training at a pal. Well, right. So, uh, I'll give Matthew a nice brush down while you guys, uh, ask questions. You know, Sherwin, there's another option. What's that? Not on the table yet. Wait till dark. I didn't like me doing that last time, this time with the map. I can't see it. You know what I mean. What? I'd rather have you stick around for a while. I'm just saying, we don't have too many options that are safe. That might be the only way. If we get stuck out there... Is that safe? Is what safe? Nothing. Is that safe, though? Safe is all relative at this point. I'm going to go brush down Matthew. Seems so. like less than, a, a lot more than a nothing if you're questioning its viability as an option. I do believe we stated that you have to gain trust, yes? All it's right. now 10 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I will consider that after we find out the knowledge. Alright. Give enough. me a moment. I'm going to set to making some bandages while you're doing what you're doing. Elisa. You, you're a barber surgeon currently, right? No. Nope. Play doctor. Play doctor. Oh. Let's we'll roll for it. Yeah. So, how many strips should I make? One, two, or three? I'll make three. Okay, it's a challenging heel test. You need ragged okay. cloth and a honey pot. All right. I have both, so that'll be a heel. 54% chance to succeed. And 42 will do it. Okay, so three strips. Takes 10 minutes. So, you descend down into the hold, Elisa? Uh, so, Elisa slips away from everybody and uh, she pulls out some mandrake root. Ooh. Of the corruption. She uh, crushes in it. Fact, in palm and I believe this is your second dose of mandrake in the past 24 hours. Not mandrake. Did you? What did you take last time for uh, your two uh, laudanum? Two laudanum. Okay. Did what did you take mandrake. for your um, prior to getting here to the docks? You did take something else yeah, well, to gain insight, it and it was mandrake. Okay, cool. So keep in mind that now, uh, because you're under the effect of two doses of mandrake root, okay. um, 
here are the considerations. Crossfading. Uh, yeah, you start crossfading. Uh, you add plus two to your peril threshold, which is good. Hell yeah. Um, right. However, um, during this time, obviously, being under the effects of <clears throat> multiple delirians, any failed perception or willpower based skill tests are critically failed instead. Hell yeah, mm. let's go. <laughs> you go ahead and you take one run corruption, of course. Yep. Uh, and by the way, this can lead to paralysis if you continue to if you if you overdose. Alright. Yeah, the more delirium the more doses of delirium you take, the you begin to compound your skills. As your your you turn failures into crit failures instead. Who else is gonna go with Elisa? Eugene? I'm going to give her a moment, though. Uh, I, I shall count to a hundred. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you both descend down into the hold, and you can hear the, the heavy creaking of the boat against the water. Alright, so she, uh, yeah, she s slides into the room with Silas. She's got her knuckle duster, like, under her, like, get tucked away a bit, because she does have holdouts, so it's, I mean, not, like, hidden, yeah. really, but, like, you know, it's just not on her person yeah. that he can see. The man has clearly been beaten. He's <laughs> black and blue and eyes swollen shut. His lip is busted open. He's a um, olive-skinned man. He's been stripped of his, of his, uh male and accoutrements but mark him as a squire uh, but you can see as his arms are now exposed he has a number of tat tattoos that ritualistically kind of carved into his arms uh, and these are not like fancy tattoos these are literally brands all up and down his hands and arms does he have hair? Uh, he does yeah his face is covered in a bit of soot is that, is that like long hair or short hair? Yeah, like longish hair. Long hair unkempt he has a five o'clock shadow. He looks like he probably meticulously shaves. Soot squ stained squire. <laughs> his knees are a bit bloodied. Or he's been forced down to his knees when he was defeated. He yielded, but um, he gave up his arms and armaments. He looks toward you. You look toward him. Lady. I don't feel like making this long and drawn out, so I will start with this now. What was your mission here? At Almaren's Gate. Yes. He says with a very high lilting kind of like a like a like his accent clearly marks him as Airday and almost you can almost identify this man probably grew up well grounded, well to do. In Almaren's Gate. Yes. We were charged by the Inquisitor to stamp out heresy. What consists of heresy in your mind? And hers? We were given an order to cleanse Almeron's gate with the printing presses. Just, just printing presses? What about the scriveners who ran them? Book binders who supported them. Other businesses who propped them up. And all books that happened to be in this entire place. Books that were printed by the press. So what of the archivist library in the Lyceum? What was to become of them? The archivist library, uh, as I understand it, has been unsullied. The Lyceum has become the throne of judgment. For the Inquisitor. And your mission, when you came down to the docks, what was it? We were to find some smuggler who had been absconding books aboard his ship. This ship. He motions around him where you can see books stacked everywhere. Hmm. How many of you are there? Of the Inquisition? Yes. We were 50 strong. And when you say were, do you mean because of our efforts, or do you mean because of other efforts that have happened? No others have stood in the way of Inquisitor Evangeline. 
Save for your love. When you paid mercenaries? I believe we're asking the questions here. <laughs> I appreciate your effort, but this is not a two way relationship, friend. Roll inter- your interrogation. This, what is your, your, what's your social class? Uh, burger. Burger, okay. It will be challenging for you. Uh, so we just straight up 43. Can I assist? Uh, 40, success. Oh, well, no. I don't need to assist. He nods. So, do you know the names of the men that you were sent to apprehend on this ship? One Jonah Sparrow. And do you know his whereabouts other than the ship? Other Jonah Sparrow. Yes, other locations you were meant to check for him. We don't learn of Jonah Sparrow until we had interrogated Booker. Ah. Where is Booker? He Dead. is said to be executed. When? By Otto Guillotine. And when is that to happen? The summary is to take place today, at the noon hour. He and a number of other heretics will be set to the blade. Who are there, the heretics that you're speaking of? Bookbinders, scriveners, other businesses supported, the printers. Well, we already mentioned this. To a certain extent. But then again, I never know quite where you see heresies in the line. Me? It's, a, it's not for me to decide. Of course not. Yeah. Nothing is ever for you to decide, is it? Just box. Alright, so anyway, the other thing that I need to know. Your zealots. Your your runners. Why you are they chasing? Street preachers. I don't give two shits what title you decide to give these people. Why were they chasing down people in the middle of the street during the night that weren't printers? As I said, printers, bookbinders, other businesses supported the printing presses. So then why has every word been erased from this place? Because it had been spread through the lies of the devilish machine. The devilish machine. So street numbers. Street numbers are now the devil's machine. Look before you, he says, as he stands with the chains rattling, or the rope kind of stressing against his wrists as he motions about him. These tones, pro- pro- these tones proclaim all men are profanity or propaganda. No, no, not, not even remotely. Half of these don't even have a, a subject on their cards. That one's a cookbook to teach recipes. Another malady treatment based off gut health. Good sir, you must be blind. Well, I'm. I I'm not here the... to discuss your heresy or to discuss your religious leanings. I don't give two shits. What I would like to know at this point is what kind of patrols you have set up. What people are going through the streets at when? Almeron's gates has been quelled. We have rooted out in the deepest of recesses the propagandists, the bleeding hearts. You're stalling. Admirable, but that does not answer the lady's question. Her question, and we'll put it simpler for you, is if I were to go to the shore, would you have more men on the right side of it or the left? The right, I don't know, I step on his right leg in an uncomfortable manner. Or the left, and I twist his left ankle. As I'm sure you can understand, or maybe perhaps you don't, being born so low, he says. Oh. And today is judgment day. You can do what you want. It will not matter. You cannot stop the Inquisitor. Today is the day that the, that the heresy will be rooted from this place. Mm. Well, he seems to decline your request for more information. To what appear he does. Shall you or shall I? She's going to attempt to pretend that she is of the same class as him. Okay. So, that so she roll can a secret to disguise him. test. Okay. I get a plus 20 base to that. You're a aren't you? Yeah. I am a burger. Oh, okay. All right. so, she's only a Marius. 
<laughs> but yeah, I get a plus 20. So what are your chances for success? So, uh, let's see. This guy's is a 52, so 72. Okay. <laughs> it's a standard. It's a not standard. It's a secret test, so go ahead and roll. <laughs> 35. You want to keep that? Yes. <laughs> speak down to him all you want, but you speak to me like an equal. You can pretend all you want, my lady. But I can see right through you. Okay. She said. He says. Can I get a plus twenty to guile the light? <laughs> you don't think I have not stood before people of your kind before? I have dealt. I've been on the other side of this conversation. Exactly. What do you think that the Inquisitor does? Ask questions nicely. You think I'm not accustomed to the rigor of Inquisition? Do you not think that I cannot see through the lies, the bluster, the bluff? Well, I should like then to I make that harder for him. Then I suppose we stop lying. And she's going to pull a small dagger from her belt. Lying, he says. We're only getting started. Mm. I would like to... Every cut, every bruise, every break brings me closer to the cataclysm. Then maybe I just bring you straight to it. To be honest, right now you're not being useful. I don't really care. Um, has Every... True Detective picked up on anything? Not yet. You have to roll a scrutinize test for that. It takes an hour, remember, an hour for Major Group to take effect. That's fine. Well, to prevent you, I suppose, of seeing through our lies, I suppose I'll have to prevent you seeing you draw a veil <laughs> and then you both will gain nine corruption. Yeah. 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 It's going to happen. Yeah, we're yeah. good. <laughs> and in fact, by the time you finish your bloody work, both of you need to roll hard resolve tests to withstand terror. Uh, would that be against uh, viewing blood and viscera? Because I got You're indifference. Fine with indifference. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not. Um, and I'm just counting money off of Matthew. Yeah. So that's, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, well, you said hard resolve. Mm -hmm. I'm great at those. <laughs> um, we're, good, we're the good guys, right? Uh, ah, we're fail, 42. We're good okay. people. We the By the time this is all finished, you gain nine more corruption. Yeah. Um, because you fail versus yeah. terror, and you behold your evil works uh, as you've gained, if you've suffered uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 12 mental peril. I am imperiled. As you back away, the man is dead. Uh, you've earned nothing, and you've learned nothing beyond what he told you. Well, that was useless. Oh, I believe we may have taken that one too far. Mm. I was just trying to get to the molar in the back, and the blade slipped. Warren, yeah, you come downstairs right and see throat. this, and this man is literally laying open, mm -hmm. as if he was to be open like some cat. In a, in, a, in, a, in a class that would be taught to show the innards of somebody, they have clearly gone too far. I would have hung up my very nice quilted armor, by the way. <laughs> yeah. what, what do you all lot do here? This is this is unconscionable. He wouldn't answer. He took the man's me. blood is all over both of them. He took things too far. Probably. What did you learn? Well, we learned that the Lyceum happens to be where they are all booked up, but um, uh, but fortunately the Archivist Library has not been touched, and today is the Judgment Day where they're going to kill everybody by guillotine. Booker included. Yes. And noon at that, which not... I imagine it's what time now? Eleven? <laughs> Probably. Eleven. So we got an hour to, 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 to figure this situation out. Right. He would not disclose the anomena like as we walk upstairs away from the scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so I'm, we can I'm, them. I'm gonna wrap the body up and <laughs> you know. They come up, Dak, and even your nice book I, is I, covered I, in blood. That you failed your interrogation to or you failed your test versus terror. You gave in to something very dark. Wonder, there's no hiding the there's no hiding the work both on your psyche and physically what you both have done as they come top deck. I wrap the body up and dispose of it in the uh, Unfortunately, sometimes my incompetence kicks in. Hey, oh. Boy. So, 
You know one of you is supposed to be the good magistrate during this line of questioning, right? I, I regret I, I think we failed that part of training. Uh, yes, I, I went a little too far with it. You can see that Elisa's eyes are clearly dilated as the magic group is now. This is fucking shameful. Listen, I'm all for killing a person when they deserve it. This man hunted down random people, people who only made books and then decided to slaughter them in the street and sent his zealots across them, and he even tried to kill us repeatedly, yet uh, somehow. Yes, and I would agree that uh, that man deserves death. Mm-hmm. But what you're doing, that ain't right. <sighs> I can figure out morality later. We don't have time right now. Oh, we don't? No, well, there's going to be a guillotine and a mass killing in the next hour. All right, I'll drop it, but you know what you did. And, uh... Well aware. Um... I don't make eye contact. <laughs> I like, try and straighten off my coat, but it doesn't work. Uh, was I able to figure out how much money was on Matthew? 35 crowns each. Okay, nice. Yeah. Uh, nice. Uh, so, y- yeah. Did you find out whether or not we need to do subterfuge? I believe the mission is drawing to a close. He did not disclose in the end the patrols along the river, but I believe our mission is more or less drawing to an end here, as far as they are going. Oh, so it is. So, speed is more of the essence than taking our time. All right, let's go as we is, and let's be off. You, you able to lead the way? Yes, now, quite. I'll wait until we get on the board mm-hmm. and we're going across. Listen, you know I'm up for a fight as much as any other people, but there's only one. And he, like, stops and counts one, two, three, four, five of us. We, we ain't gonna take on a whole city full of, of zealots, and they're probably all gonna be witnessing this. Less than 50. That's at least an optimal number. Probably close to 40 now, considering our efforts yesterday. Still more than we can handle, but... That's right, but more let's know the numbers. Have. So what are we trying to achieve here? If we can't, if we can't get in there, we can't save Jonah. And we can't save the little book line. Well, that was one thing. He never... Booker. They have not found they don't Jonah. Know Jonah. But all of them could be at this judgment day that they're speaking of for the bookbinders and everything. And though I am want to end it, I don't know that we could stop 40 people. Right, that's what I'm saying. But what we could do is potentially find Jonah in the time that they're busy. All right. So we we see if we can form a distance. We see if there's an opportunity to get Booker out. If there's no opportunity, we would go and find Jonah. We can try. And, uh, it's a good thing they're using guillotine. It's one at a time. Well. Well, in, in comparison to other methods. It depends. If they start alphabetically, it'd be good to be at the top of that list, not the bottom. Yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, he shudders and... Okay. Elisa does have a change of clothes, so she is going to change. Even if it's on the boat, like, or going across. So you have your clothes on you? Your additional clothes? Your I backpack? do. Yeah, it's part of my encumbrance. Yeah. I'm going to throw my heavy cloak over. Yeah. Well. The, boat, the rowboat is now drawing across the axe water, and you have just a few minutes left until you reach the shore. I believe... I'm going to pull out a smelling salt and cruise it. Why? Yeah, one smelling corruption for that. You go one step up the pair for the track. Yep. I believe we should make our way to the Lyceum, then, most directly. I will draw a crowd, so, I mean, we at least have people to blend in with. Right. Well, it is potential if there are people that are still not to be killed by guillotine that they have collected them all up to watch. Seems like something that an inquisition would do, right? Mm. Bit of pageantry. Bit of threat. 
Well, everyone thinks they're the hero in their own story, right? Mm -hmm. As you're getting closer to the the shore, you can see that the air smells of burning wood and ferrous iron. Something's burning in the city. And as the boat kind of comes up on this silty shore, you disembark in the cold waters to bring the boat and flip it over and begin moving between the reeds and clambering up the river wall into the into Almeron's gates near the dockyards. You can smell it. And you can see it. Um, I take them on the most direct course to get to the Lyceum. No more than just a few yards from you as you can step out into the street, you can see this building set completely ablaze. You can see bits of paper and scroll kind of floating in the air like ash everywhere. Are we on that Booker Street? You were on Booker Street right now, yes. So they set one of the billions on fire this day. Yeah. Seems dangerous. It seems very dangerous. We're one to talk about this. <laughs> We're past game pains, I mean. We may have set a quarter of a city on fire. <laughs> it may have happened. <laughs> on accident. An accident. I'm sure. But, but yeah. Alright. Is this the building you was looking for? Are we heading right at it? You're heading toward whether you're passing by the burning building. You're still making your way into the city. You were surprised to find there's nobody in the street. The the alleys are choked with smoke. Your eyes sting. There are blazes here and there throughout the throughout throughout some some of the buildings are on fire, smaller buildings, um, but clearly workshops where these printing presses were. There are a few burnout hovels that were extinguished by the snows the night before. Where there is not fire, there is snow built up against the side of buildings and snow drifts. The uh, broken cobblestone underneath your feet is marked with ashen footprints. Some bare, some boots, but there's been movement through here. You see a nearby abandoned wagon where the horses are still standing attached to the harness uh, where two people were drug off of it beaten to a bloody pulp. They will destroy this entire place. All 40 of these people that are left will destroy this entire quarter of the city. I wish there was more I could do about it. Well, like I said, there's only so many of us. It's unfortunate, but it ain't our mission to stop it. Wish we could do anything about it, but there's just too many. Warren is right. Unless there was other people that are still not blind for that guillotine that we could gather. Most importantly, it ain't our mission. Sir. Right. You pass beneath these tall archways that you know lead into the, the plaza area where you know that the Lyceum and the Archivist Library face one another. And certainly as you kind of come down these set of stairs, this large open deep kind of plaza opens up before you that is lined with snow and throngs of people uh, who are bearing torches, who are dressed like the fanatics before, and you kind of pause as you realize you're no more than just maybe 50 yards away at best from them, and they're gathered before the Lyceum, this soaring stone building uh, that has these huge flying buttresses, it almost looks like a cathedral of sort. Uh, and you can see that up on uh, above this set of tall steeple doors, there is these engraved symbols of um, of Eloran. And among you don't see any Elorans among the throng. Uh, immediately, Eugene, none are wearing like the high collars or anything like that. But you can see that they're slowly filtering into the Lyceum, and outside, up on this tall raised wooden dais that they've constructed um, there are these sets of guillotines that there are nine in a row and they are attached by these strange metal pipes and this odd looking engine is beside it and it's smoking and churning as this dusky skinned man is tinkering with it 
the whole the whole platform and the guillotines are shaking and shambling. Uh, there's nobody else out there save for him and the throng of zealots filtering into the Lyceum. Would I be able to tell with an education uh, if by shutting down the generator would we be able to prevent the guillotines from functioning? Or is there like a fail safe where they can just flip the switch and it drops on map? You have no idea. You've never seen anything like this before. This does not look like any guillotine that you've seen. Truly a foul contraption. Know, we'll if I had my way, I'd destroy it. Not my place. Huh. Is it not? So the Lyceum is the building that we were Our going to now. to try and find. The, the, the archivist the library is the untouched one where we know... Um, Jonah. The father works think it, Jonah and so. Jonah might be as well. Right. So Eugene cr- points across the plaza, and you can see a smaller building, a squat stone building uh, that looks, more, as opposed to, li- as opposed to the soaring cathedral, looks almost like a, like a prison. Uh, it's a squat stone, windowless building uh, that you know descends down below the earth and not above toward the sky. So, uh, as the cathedral reaches toward the sky, the archivist library goes down below the city. Sort of an entry parlor, if you mm. will, um, from what you recall from your studies here. I, don't know, I say the archivist library is probably our best bet while the crowd is there. If we make our way towards it, we can at least avoid most of detection. If we spot out Jonah or Booker and are able to assist him, then we can see it as we move in. So we wait for the executions to start, and then we make our move. Use it as cover. Well, to be fair, Booker was a, kind of a side mission, right? Like he's not the primary goal here. We need to remember, so we get distracted easily. You know, like with, with Amelia, like it was her. It was, she was the our primary protection target. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so they failed. That, that's that. my that's my point. Right. <clears throat> we we miss out on Booker, but we get Jonah. Right. Well, let's let's um, make haste. Uh, Keep an eye out for an opportunity because if there is anything we can do to sabotage this, we're saving innocence. Perhaps but, that contraption being worked on by that vicious man might be the the way to stop them from operating. I mean, it's still yeah. kill them. It's just not as efficiently. I mean, if I had the Baroness, I could do some damage, but. I'm gonna look around and see if there is a wagon, possibly, that's moved some zealots anywhere near. No. Look, this this lot, if we take that machine out, they're gonna find one way or the other to kill these people. They'll just kill them with swords or something. It, it doesn't make any difference as far as that concerned. Do any here have um, education skill rank? I do. Yes. yes. Uh, guillotines are considered a humane way to dispose of people of higher class and stock. That's what you do know about guillotines. Mm. It would not be something that would be wasted on a peasant. Well, at least it's a quick end to what they'll be getting. It's for the important people, I suppose. Right. Eugene's going to look away from you, Tyrwen, as he says, quick, remembering what he did on the boat. Well, let's see if, can you, do you know a way to that library? Okay. Front door. There's no side doors, back doors. I assume it's like a fortress of knowledge, not so much an inviting, welcoming, come on in and that's, learn. That's right. It's a, a place where the Warrenites are certainly welcome, as they would be at the Lyceum. Both are closed off to the public. I'm afraid the front entrance is the only entrance. We don't exactly invite people to come in and read the books. It's more of a, you must have entry to be able to. Well, all right, well, you hear a distant thud as the as the double doors, as the door that was open to oh, the let the flagellants and zealots in, has closed, and now there's nobody in the plaza save for that man who's near the, the row of guillotines connected to the machine. We've got an opportunity to take that man out. We do it. I don't see. I don't see how it makes any difference. They go out by a guillotine. They go out by a sword. We can at least try. It slows it down. It causes confusion. Maybe someone could get away. Maybe this is some kind of ritual that they assume they have to kill these people by guillotine. Look, what I'm saying is, we want this execution to go by smoothly so we can get into the library. 
hole they cause a ruckus and they have to try to fix it. They ruckus, also might ruckus means that the execution doesn't happen. That means uh, that there's not con- there's they're not focused on it, and it means we can't get in. These guillotines are made largely of wood, right? Wood, rope, and a big old blade, and a uh, pillory to put somebody's head into, with baskets to catch it. But these guillotines look really strange. Like they seem to be constructed of iron. In wood, you can't really make sense of it. Like you don't understand right. exactly how this is supposed to work because you don't see ropes holding the blades up at all. That's weird. <laughs> um, so I'll, uh, I the mean, ch- the machine chugs and whirs and belches forth black smoke. As you can see, an octopus of pipes extending off of it, kind of coming out of all of its smokestacks. Could I attempt to scrutinize this particular machinery and see if I can figure out a weak point? From this distance? No. Not from where you're at. You're still a good 50 or so yards out. I wouldn't say to, get, to give you To give you some perspective on 50 yards, yeah. that's from here to you, MKC. Yeah. You, you can't even make out this man's features. Right. Tevin, look. You think my judgment is clouded, so you tell us which way to go. My gut says we try. Oh, you know what? Let's rewind that because you did do have your true detective ability, right, and you did take a lot of them. So go ahead and make a scrutinized test, but this will not be easy. It will be hard. Okay. Scrutinize hard. Okay. So I have a 62% perception, or 62 in scrutinize. Uh, so that's right, 42, 40. Ooh, you have this kind of inkling, this spark building in the back of your head of what or how this thing could work. Like your mind immediately turns toward when you were young. And your mother would put a pie uh, into the, uh, the the freestanding stove, and you knew that if the coals weren't hot enough, that it would if the coals were too hot, it would burn the crust. And if it wasn't warm enough, it would, it would warm the pie too slowly. So you felt as a child you were constantly either waiting or hearing your mother become angry at the fact that the pie was burnt because the coals were too hot. You have a strong feeling uh, that. This thing is clearly power coal powered. Um, not only that, uh, if you were to overheat it with too many coals, it could cause the blaze to drop. In the same way that a pie is burned and ruined, you could potentially ruin this machine if there's too if it was too hot. What I think lantern oil would be something that would help it burn hot. Lantern oil is a perfect accelerant, <laughs> but you would need a lot of it. How many is a lot? I have a lantern and I have one pot, but that's... I have nine pots. So this is information that only she knows gotcha. to, 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 to frame this. Well, only so she, she is... This is kind of going through her head at this moment. Gotcha. And it, it, it literally is the smell of the... It was, it's kind of like that memory kind of buried deep, that nugget of your youth that kind of inspires this thought that you've yet to, to tell others. We could burn it. We could overheat it. We could destroy that machine. I'm all about the burning. Yeah. Right. I, <laughs> Hold on, everybody. <laughs> if we overheat the engine and cause that to seize. What? The machine. The machine that's in front of us. The, the guillotine. The guillotine. If we get something hot enough, we can burn it to the ground. The engine will destroy itself. Yeah, fire's hot. Right. That's what we can do. Fire's just burn it. Do it. I need oil. I need large quantities of, of oil or, or something that well, burns. Well, how much do you need? Uh, what would, I guess, five, six pots? What do you think? That you cannot know unless you try. As much as I can get. Well, I have all these, and I like open my bag, and there's like nine oil pots in the bottom of it. That should do it. <clears throat> well, I'll need at least the one, and I, I ready my shield. <laughs> right. Um, we're gonna do this quickly, and if we if, if we don't do this quickly, we just take him out and we move on to the to the library. 
think this is a ridiculous endeavor. I don't often agree with Warren, but I do now. <laughs> it's counterintuitive to what we're trying to get across. This ain't our mission. You wish to save one man in a hold that tried to kill us, and I'm trying to save an entire city's worth of birth lines. See, it's, see, what I'm worried about is... saving no, no one. What, what I'm worried about is what happens when we are ready to leave. You hear the clock strike 11.30. Dern, 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 dern. I can. Uh, dern, so, dern, 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 dern. It's coming from the Lyceum. You can sneak a bell for knock him out. Yeah, so during that point in time with... You know, with it not being the bells of uh, Durandal. Yeah, but, the bells uh, of Durandal are uh, yeah. are Metallica. <laughs> <dern, dern, dern. laughs> yeah. They they ring throughout the entire city. Um, with there are five bells. <laughs> with those bells being pretty loud, do I, you know, when they when they immediately start, do I believe that we could make it to them on foot before they're done ringing? Like I want to just go up and Ooh, good go up and question. Just, like, take them out. Yeah, because. If you Church all ran on forward, for a long time in Europe. No, nope. mm-hmm. those bells. If you ring. think if you ran down there, you may be able to. Is that the order you wish to give? Yeah, that's what I want to do. I want to make sure that he can't hear us coming. Okay. So this will be a modified chase scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting. We're yeah. chasing like the clock tower. Mm-hmm. I like it. Let's go. It's a race against time, clock. guys. That's right. A literal clock. <laughs> it is a race against time. Uh, it is going to I be just had the a. Worst pun come into my head. Uh, oh god! Do it. Are we gonna be saved by the bell? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all right. That's uh, a that's an okay pun. It's it's all right because right, we're saved by the bell. That's so bad. It makes you want to screech. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> I mean, you should do this, Morris. Yeah. Uh, why? He's gonna have a Zach. You hear the ringing of the bells. <laughs> exact my. Opinion. It will be a short chase. We'll go for Terwin. Yeah, if we miss. Harper. Oh, sorry. Elisa. Warren. Our name is Phew. <laughs> Phew. 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 The we. Okay. The we. You must take we your movement and add 1d10. It. So we'll first go for Tara, and what is your value? Oh, it's going to be awesome. Oh, God. Trust me. It's going to be amazing. Alright. Uh, at least I rolled a 10. 16. <laughs> Harper. 9. 16. Lisa. Warren. 14. 13. 13. <laughs> you begin Five. rushing down there. You're coming down this broad set of stairs where you know hundreds have gathered before to meet here in summer to trade. The bells are still ringing. You can hear them growing closer. Excuse me, I'm 15. I'm encumbered. No. By one. No, uh, no. Cheetah! Cheetah! <laughs> How dare you? Oh, Terwin, what's your value? Roll again. 16. <laughs> That's how you know the plan's gonna work. <laughs> Even your dice line. No, I'm gonna work. roll a one next <laughs> round. You said, you, you get a, hold on, time out. You got a 16? 16, yes. Okay. Harper? Uh, so 6 plus 8 is 14. Okay. Elisa? 12. Warren? 17. Warren's Eugene? Fine. 17. Oh, shit. <laughs> You're almost to the machine in the guillotines. Make your final roll. Terwin. Ten. Harper. Fourteen again. Elisa. 
Warren. 11. Eugene. 17. Eugene comes up on top of this platform. As you can hear the whole thing chugging, where the whole platform is shambling and shaking. As you can see what can only be described as an auto guillotine. Running at least ten yards with nine different blades. You're in the man, he's a very thin, kind of evilish looking fellow, kind of hunkered over like some goblin, working his wrenches and poking inside the stoking the fire at this huge kind of basket full of coals, and he's speaking in a tongue you cannot understand. He does not see you. He is completely unaware. He you've got him dead to rights. I would, in the last few steps, pull my very finely crafted rapier and then just come up straight behind him and try and plunge it through the back of his head. Like, right out the throat. That's where I'm going to go. Right as you draw your rapier, you were one yard off. (laughs) You come up on him on the platform as he turns around toward you. And you bury the blade to the hilt through his stomach as he I'm gonna put that like try and cup my hand over his mouth. Yep. You hear a wheezing coming from his lung as it begins to burble, you hear his come this kind of pop pop burble sound from his lung, and he slumps to the ground. <laughs> As you actually made it. Uh, <laughs> fire for good effect. By one. Oh. <laughs> oh, Dig it. You have slain the operator okay. of the auto guillotine. Right in time for the bells. The clock is now 11.30. Ooh, that was a close one. Uh, I will... Yeah. My, this was uh, my roll. 46 <laughs> to show our uh, to show our our watchers we tracked this on the board right here and I tracked so we tracked each character in a short chase scene oh. like this and I tracked the clock individually on a hidden piece of paper uh, and Eugene got a 47 which beat the 46 I guess <laughs> so that's how it that's how it works out down to the 11th hour. That's the first time I ever used a chase for something that was not a chase. Yeah, yeah, that was good. I like that. The 11th hour, I like that. <laughs> so. It's a countdown instead that's of right, That's right, that's yeah, right. It's like the final so countdown. So the, the, the final countdown. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we're playing Radiator? It's not a trick, Michael. A tri- <laughs> I'm sorry, we're getting this. A trick is what a whore does for money, Michael. Uh, <laughs> all right, so <laughs> when he kills... Uh, the person. Yes. Um, uh, I'm gonna point between us, and I'm gonna say, "You think they'll hold the body in the in the library? We need to move." All right, all right. Who's <coughs> what? What are you going to do? Elisa <coughs> is throwing the lantern oil in when, when they have left. How many pints? Uh, let's go with. He gave me eight. Uh huh. I had one, nine. Anybody else give me any? <coughs> Uh, I would have, but it's too late now. <laughs> yeah, no. okay. So she throws nine in there. Nine in. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. I'm just gonna reset. But that. She keeps them in the bottle so that, uh, but she uncorks it so that it's not an immediate like. Mm. Yeah. At her. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> I have my one. Okay. She, that way, it'll slowly trickle in and just overheat it. Right. Yeah. Taryn's going to try and pick the body up so that he can at least. Try and get blood on him before it's. You have to hold to X to do that. Yeah. Just you pick yeah, up yeah, your yeah, shoulder yeah. and walk over um, the hold X again to he's drop. Gonna, he's going to try and not leave a blood trail, and, yeah. and, and he doesn't mind the blood on him, yeah. um, if possible. So uh, <laughs> the the manner in hurried fashion in which Eugene and all of you had to take to get here in time. Uh, in the violent way you had to end this man right on the strike at the clock, uh, unfortunately prevented you from being overly cautious, so it's a pretty rough cut. Uh, so we're going to roll a d6 chaos die to mm-hmm. see if, in fact, uh, this was a bloody end. If my die lands on a phase 6, then it is a, it is <coughs> a bloody end. Oops. Let's roll a 
up here on the table. Right. It's a three, oh. so that's good. Uh, it was Absolutely. not a bloody end, so there's no blood on the snow. You boot muddy boot prints everywhere in the snow. That's fine. Everybody else is walking around in yeah. muddy boots, but um, you slump it over the edge. You toss it. How many? How many uh, things? Nine. Are, nine. Okay. Like I said, just menu. uncork. Yep. No, don't, so be yeah. sure to mark off your, your, your oil. Yeah. Uh, if it adjusts your initiative, do so now. Uh, or if it adjusts your adjusts your overage, change it now. And you begin, and you're going to go across to the library. Is that right? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. You come to the library, and it's just like I said, this is squat stone building, not far from here. And and there's this big, heavy, iron-bound door. Um, that says kind of in a placard and like archivist library right above it. There are no windows in this place whatsoever. Your first intuition is to knock. You look across the way, across the plaza, and you can see those huge steepled doors of the Lyceum closed. It's only a matter of time until they begin to filter outside. What will you do, Eugene? Mm -hmm. uh, the door is locked, you said, already? Or just closed? It's closed. I'm just going to try the handle, see if it's open. Okay. You try to turn the handle, but it does not turn, but then you remember every Eloranite who was studied in the Archivist Library has a key. He withdraws a key from a chain, a golden chain, and he places it inside and turns the key thrice one way. He begins to turn the key back to the left a few more times to the right and back to the left with two clicks, and you hear a clunk as he works some complex device from within. Put archivist key on your character sheet. The Eloranites operate through a series of ciphers and a secret language, if you will. Uh, everything is not as it would normally seem. <clears throat> as you open the doors... Could I possibly use secret signs to understand how he did that? I would assume, uh, being a Eloranite, that he probably would do his best... To like uh, body block it, and to block like, it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, but I'll curious. let you. I'll let you both make an opposed test. Oh, okay. So um, because this is because so it's going to be an opposed test. Uh -huh. um, it's going to be you're going to basically roll uh, as if it was an easy scrutinize, and yours is going to be an easy education. Okay. And whoever has the most degrees of success wins. So remember, take your your uh, it's your units die plus the primary attribute bonus. Oh, if you succeed, I succeeded. Okay, uh, so I have a twenty-six. So let's say Two. six plus. Wait, isn't it the tens die? Sorry, tens die. My apologies. Yeah, yes, tens die. Seven. Two plus seven. She, Nine. She beat me out. I rolled a, a four. <laughs> oh. And, but that would put my bonus at uh, six total. Um, uh, you catalog it. You lock that in your head. Right. You get the. The secret, the, se the secret to the archivist key <laughs> that you can now put on your character sheet. Uh, the door opens. Here's and one for internal <clears throat> affairs. Yeah. <laughs> Will you wait outside or you just filter it? We're filtering. Filter. Filter. Yeah, as soon as possible. I would right. proceed in first so I can Hell yeah, scope out if it's appropriate for them to yeah. be able to go in immediately. As you walk in, you feel this, like, the whole place is like this open pit that descends into the darkness. There are these heavy iron chains hanging from the ceiling that suspend this massive candelabra above your head, and the whole place feels very clinical, but dark and hardly lit. As you kind of come to the edge of this, this ballast, this wooden baluster, and you look down, and you can see all these twinkling lights kind of upon floors, upon floors, upon floors, and go deeper and deeper and deeper below into the into the basements of the archivist library, but it um, it appears that this place is almost like a dungeon, and it's not well lit by any means. You can't hear any sounds, but perhaps a few faint voices here and there. Do you feel that? Huh? Yeah, it's heavy. On the precipice of hundreds and thousands. Thoughts, words, and the memories of people before us. Shit. 
Do you feel high? Yeah, let's get in so I can close the door. What? The, d- 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 take a moment to appreciate the gravity of it. Should, I am. They're going to come out. The, the door closes with a solid thud. No. no. We don't have time for reverence. All right. Now nah, we'll take a gander. Where you want me to put this? Uh, I look around for an appropriate place to stash a body that won't ruin a book. <laughs> well, there's no place. That you're literally up on the, the kind of like the entryway, and there's this pair of stairs that kind of like do this bit, almost like an MC Escher like stairwell. They descend down on either side. Just prop them up against the door. When you look you to the ce- on anything, when you look to the ceiling, this appears to be dome or vaulted on the inside. But there's nothing. There's no coat racks. There's no. There's no welcoming party. There's no front desk. It's just literally <laughs> like it opens up into this like entryway, and the stairs just literally descend down. Rude to not have a lobby. You don't come here casually. You know what you're here for. All right, well, oh, let's I left, I left me foremost back on the boat. Oh, well, perhaps I will show you around, my good sir. May I take your body? Uh, it's over there. Oh, great. I didn't really want to touch it. And uh, perhaps... Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps the tour waits and maybe we look for far. Are you sure? I know a rather great collection of... All right, then later... Right, so we. It turned out like I wanted it to. We at least have a chance of maybe saving some lives. If we can get in there, get in here, find out what's going on, at least disrupting them somehow. Well, we should proceed, proceed downwards into the library itself. Perhaps we'll find our father there. Take the way. You're in charge. Well, at least you're leading the way. He's in charge. Do you have a lantern, you said? If there's a lamp nearby, you can take it. I grab that lamp. Is it, I hope it already comes with oil. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a little <laughs> it's a little hurricane lantern, like Perfect. a little genie lamp with a hurricane on the top. Right? Just, that's a, it's, a, it's a lantern. Not a rush light by any means. But, um, you begin to descend down into this strange place, and it feels you haven't been here in quite some time, but there is a certain musty smell to it that reminds you of your early years of study. You spent quite a few, you were an archivist first, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, you remember your, your how, what is your age group? Uh, middle age. Yeah, we'll assume you probably spent most of your youth and adult years up mm-hmm. to this point probably in Kale Tyrion, and definitely your, your time here studying as an archivist for easily two, three decades. Mm-hmm. You know these libraries like the back of your hand. Um, in fact, uh, Father Bartlesby, although you his you didn't know him as a as any sort of minister at the time, uh, but you know that he was not any Loranite himself, but he is a minister that oversaw uh, the clerical activities or ec- ecclesial activities here in Celtirium. And he was an attache, essentially, of Church of the Covenant. Okay. Church of the Covenant, of course, being the chief faith of everybody, for that mm-hmm. matter. Would I know there of like a particular section where there may be works that he might gravitate towards? You wouldn't know the works, but you would certainly know where to find him. Yeah, like a, where they would be cataloged, where he might gravitate. That's right. A comfort zone, if you will, in oh, those yes. trying times. Absolutely. Um, you descend down and you're surrounded by, as you kind of descend down these stairs that kind of make this kind of hex, hexagon kind of zipping down. Question before we yes. descend. Uh, does the door automatically lock behind us? Mm-hmm. Okay. Absolutely. In fact, it requires a key to get in and to get out. Perfect. The whole thing is uh, a clever a clever construction, this place. It is meant to keep people out. It's almost like they had basically repurposed a debtor's prison as opposed to going up, it goes down. And as you descend, you feel this... It's, it's a little dizzying standing on these balustrades that appear to be not rickety, but just don't feel firm. They feel very, very old. The rich mahogany has scratch marks and and marks where people kind of place their hands in certain places for every stair. Like the the wood is worn in those places, as is the carpet that's upon the floor. The whole place is musty and smells of dust. In old books, like walking in a library, or like a used book stack, I should say, or the basement of the library, it's still kind of wet and mildewy almost it feels kind of like despite that 
um, and you pass between these tall, soaring bookcases. Uh, and, the, and you don't get a good look at the books as they're mostly enshrouded in, in, there's a light, but you can see the faintest of shapes of the bookshelves and the whatever system they use to divvy out these books as you're descending down this little this hexagonal stairwell that breaks off in places deeper into these spurs of the library until you begin to come down toward the ground floor where you can see there are nine great oaken tables uh, at the foot, at the bottom, very, very bottom of the archivist library. And you look up here as you descend it down about five stories. There are, uh, there are the same uh, lamps, hurricane lamps here that you can see everywhere. The place just feels large and empty. It has that kind of, you can get that sense that this place is bigger than what you're really seeing because you can't quite make out where sounds are coming from. But as you come downstairs, this fellow with graying hair uh, who is accompanied by this rough looking knight with uh, with short cropped hair as dressed head to toe munitions plate immediately draws a sword and you can see upon his chest emblazoned upon the the iron is the symbol of the southern cross like they are literally there they are royally the holy city is like they are like literal holy knights he draws his sword and he doesn't have spurs and he stands there and he says you come from Inquisitor Evangeline's hold? Quite the opposite, actually. We don't believe in following such book burnish ways. He pushes, he brushes aside the uh, the clergyman behind him and takes a few steps forward. Speak your voices now. Speak true. I will know if you are lying. We are uh, here to uh, seek out Father Bottlesby. Your name, uh, you sir. Uh, Eugene Thornberry. I, I actually studied here in my youth. You see the old man kind of peek around the armored fellow. Is it Thornberry? You hear calling from a man behind him. I pat the now rotund belly. Well, not as little as I used to be, but yes. And do I recognize the voice at all? It's, without a doubt, it's Father Bartlesby, but he is old. Much older than you remember seeing him. He and, you, and the thing is, he's a 20 years your elder. He's probably in his 60s now. Gotcha. Mission complete, friends. Little Thornberry? Yes. Is that you? Yes. We are uh, on here of some matter of importance and believe you might be the man best assist us. By the gods, he approaches and gives him a firm embrace. <coughs> <laughs> Trail old man gives you a hug. He's not a hugger. <laughs> not a hugger. I'm a torturist. And I'll, uh, while they're while they're embracing, I'll I'll look at the knight with hands still <laughs> drawn up in the air and say, uh, "Name's Tao and Forrest uh, with the uh, with the uh, wow. Why am Dufresne. I <laughs> with the uh, Dufresne agency? This knight looks." green in the sense that he looks young but he has this very hard stare and his face is like so familiar to you Harper like he's of you he's your age I'm okay. fine with that symbol well, I'll take a minute and uh, see if I can recognize him you kind of search the memory banks and nothing immediately comes to, to re you never don't really recollect but his face looks so familiar okay he has pinched Cherubic cheeks, like a, he's like a, a childlike face, with narrow with narrow eyes. You can see uh, his armor has not been beaten by any means. He is not, but he is no peacock knight either. Um, he clearly knows he levels his sword and he knows exactly what he's doing. And you know, you Southern, Southern Cross knights do not have because remember the faith of Church of the Covenant forbears blood, so the sword has no tip; it is flattened. But it is razor sharp on either side. Hmm. The sword, this sword is literally flattened like. Uh, I can show you a quick illustration. Um, yeah. Well, shit, everybody. In fact, I'm a yeah, the, the, sword, the swords of the Southern Cross are kind of like this. They technically have a bladed edge on either side, but uh, they have they the, the swords of the Southern Cross are not tipped. Clavager. 
Alright. The knight says. I believe we are acquainted somehow. You look a little familiar. I am Guillaume the second. Guillaume? Um uh, my father was Splendid, right? Clavager? What? What's that? My father was Splendid Clavager? That's right. Yeah, my dad's uh Splendid Clavager. He looks the father borrows me. He sheathes his weapon. Hello, Rands. <laughs> but I recognized you. Yeah? They kind of look toward one another like they've seen each other before, but quite, quite hard to recollect from where. Yeah. Father Bottles will be kind of finishes his embrace with Eugene and says, <laughs> Please, y'all, you're, you're in a place of safety. Why? Why have you come at such a terrible time? Well, we're here because we're looking for Jonah, a man named Jonah Sparrow. You mentioned that if he did not return back to the ship, that he'd be seeking you out. We were hoping that you might know his whereabouts. Jonah Sparrow? Yes. Well, yes, indeed. He is here. That's good. That makes things easier. In, in the library. Sir. Yes. Uh, quick thought, though. Um, you... You know what's going on up there, right now? With Evangeline, he says. Yeah. They, he 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 nods. Oh yes, yeah. everyone in Almeron's gates has been uh, borne witness to her inquisition. No, I mean like right now, right now. Like she's about to execute a bunch of people. Yes. We cannot stand for that, Sir Guillaume says. All right. Master Bar Father Bottlesby, we cannot allow this to happen. We have attempted to stop them the best we can at yeah, this we're point, try but... We're trying to deliver good news with bad. If there's not a lot more of you, I don't know how we're going to They're stop They're important, them. faithful people who want to be put to the put to the sword if we don't do something. Father bottles me. Certainly you, can't, you don't agree with this. I mean, as much as I'd like to take action, we did that last night. Some of us almost died twice over. Their numbers are hurt, but they still have a good 40, at least, that we think. Yeah, we took out a good 10, 10 maybe 12 if we were lucky. Um, I don't know how many times you fired that poker gun. Oh, Anyways, wow. uh, yeah, we was able to take home more than we had. But, uh, I mean, we couldn't, couldn't do that again. But the mass slaughtering weapon, at least, has been... Disabled, we think, for now. We hope so. That will not stop them, Sir Guillaume says. Of course. What about if it is not by the guillotine, it be by the sword. They will put those people to death. They are innocent. They have done nothing. What it, if we remove the head of the snake, as it were? What if Evangeline herself were to die? Father Bartle's beak and a strokes his grey beard. Well, that... I not to mind you... What? As a minister, I cannot condone open violence, but I also recognize in times of trouble, tough decisions must be made. You can may you, have something there. Can you, Thornberry. can you possibly explain why such an event has occurred? Like, she's an inquisitor of who? Like, Lauren? Like, who has empowered her to do these things? I'm certain that you know that the Holy Father has been dead for three years. Mm -hmm. Right, he died in Belagain. A new one has not arisen. The Church of the Covenant is, uh, without its headmaster, a leader, a spiritual leader, no one has been deemed by Pontifex to step up or to be worthy of such a title. With the death of the Holy Father three years ago, on the last cataclysm, most of Church of the Covenant doing what they can to control what they can. Even here in Kael in the very birthplace of the Yalor Knights, this woman, this Inquisitor, while well, perhaps her heart was once true, she has seen to madness. She has gathered a very large following of people in her years. She brought them here by a ship in Almeron's gates, feeling that knowing she, she, that she spoke with the steward's voice, the steward had commanded her to 
destroy every printing press, to destroy the writ to destroy the printed word, believing it to be a infernal machine of devils and demons, spreading dire words and the propaganda of stories that were simply not true. How have you avoided them here? They know this place exists. They do, but the archivist library is impenetrable. They have battered at the doors, they have beaten at the walls, but these maddened, frothing throngs do not know the secrets of the Ylor Knights. So why have you not taken people here to save them? <laughs> we retreated here when we first heard, when the first printing press was set ablaze. We knew something was afoot, and nothing good. How many is we? So Guillaume, Genevieve, and I. Wait, wait, the Sir Guillaume Jen Jen Wait, you said the second. The boy nods. You would guess that he's maybe sixteen. Oh, wait. Hey, your dad and my grandfather ran around for each other. Yes, I'm sure they went far back, but now's not the time for rumination. Father Bobblesby, Master Eugene, we must yes. do something. Later. Something right. must be done. This cannot stand. Well, Madam, certainly you you see that something must be done, Sir Guillaume. Please. I'm one for drastic measures, as my companions can state. However, the only thing I saw is that yesterday, when we did take on the throng that we did, when we erased the Templars, they did fall. It is possible that this group could be taken out if we take out Evangeline, but how would we get to her? Yeah, and did, weren't you able to uh, kind of talk some of them into well, fighting coerce each them? Well, talk some sense into them. We've delayed a spectacle outside. Surely when they decide to re-put on said spectacle, Evangeline herself will grace us with her damning presence. The Inquisitor has been holding court, if you would even deem it to call it that. Sentence is passed, and then there is no presumption of innocence. There is simply guilt, guilt, guilt. It is only a matter in which that she and these maddened throngs will decide the ways of death. Who will I, be I, put to the sword, and those who will be put to the fire, and the stake, and those who will be put to the guillotine. My dear holy man, I understand. But my point is, how would we get to her? There are, there's, there's a path between the two temples. Is there now? Oh, yes. Didn't want to say anything. It seemed not pressing at the time. We weren't trying to get in there. Well, well, but I don't have yeah. a key. I Father Barlesby admits. I am merely a custodian of this place. I am not its keeper. I am no Elor Knight. I am here on... I am here as a... As a, as a guest. <laughs> this is not my place. As it should so happen, the learner's pupils do grace us with their presence. I have a key, yes. I could probably open that route. Tis a direct line from what I understand, Father Bottlesby says. I've never been through it myself. We Just must be expeditious. There's no time to tarry. It is almost the stroke of noon. A good yeah. sacred passage is again. It would give us the edge. You come out Boom like. sticks are blazing. Now there would be uh, at once. Um, it would be it would be probably easiest if we did were able to do this because I mean we have to leave too. If we um, pop over there, cause a ruckus, they'll be searching the building. We might be able to pop back through the passageway and escape out the other side. Aye. Do you intend to draw blood up on holy ground? Father Bartlesby inquires. Do you have a better idea? We can convince her. Change your ways. Yeah. Stop this whole thing. An insane heretic that's been burning an entire town, and we five are somehow going to come up with an idea to change her mind. Heretic on day, the Inquisitor honors the tradition. She knows that no blood must be spilt in the thresholds of a holy place. She may be mad, yes, but she is mad with the power oh, of God. Oh, but on the stairs, it's perfectly fine. Once but again, listen, woman. Yeah. We take her hostage hostage. That'll stop it. She will not draw blood in the Lyceum. It will be beyond the threshold. To do so otherwise would be 
would damn her soul to the well. We can, we can take her hostage, drag her back in there. She will commit no violence, and she will not allow any violence to be committed within. If you were to do this, she cannot go in with swords and wands. You will damn yourselves. And I cannot show you the way to the tunnel unless you agree to this. Swords and wands, no. Dear God. Oh. What about whips? Come now. Do you think the gods are going to split hairs with you? No, you must make a decision now. If you want to know where this tunnel is, you must agree. No violence will be brought within the walls of the Lyceum. Agree to this and I will show you the tunnel. Do not and you will have to figure out another way. He looks to Sir Guillaume. Sir Guillaume nods. Indeed, Father Bottles B is true. I am a Southern Cross Knight through and through, and despite the danger that the Inquisitor Evangeline poses, I will not even draw blood inside the temple. Well, damn, you, damn your soul to oblivion. I grab it not. So. Alright, well then, why would we go over there? Because we have people that are strong and quiet. All right, take her hostage. I mean, if it, if killing is what the end result is, then we could do it in the streets on our way out. All right. If you'd agree to it. We've got, got ourselves into Sir Guillaume. Father Barnaby says to him. Oh, I'm sorry. That's fine. Uh, what did he say? No, I missed. What have we gotten ourselves into? Yeah. Uh, listen, I know how strong you is. I know how quiet you is. I'm strong, sure. But, uh, if you want me to go with you, I can. I'm even willing to take this off in order to be quieter. Inquisitor Evangeline speaks with the power of God. Be warned, Sir Guillaume says very evenly. I've heard people speak what do you mean God by, and for what do you mean God. by that? She speaks with the power of the divine. Is all you need to know. Beyond her own voice? He nods solemnly. Something in that strikes warrant is a little too close to home. We can't do any damage to this woman. We can't hurt her. It'd be like doing the same to me. I mean, I ain't no assassin, so... I mean, obviously, quiet. we're not allowed to be one if we're in the Elysium. Right, but we can, we can, if you can go under there for secret means, you can pull her out of there quick like, and quiet like, and pull her back here. No blood must be spilled inside the Lyceum, Father Bartles B reinsures. You know the canon, you know the tenants. Whether you be a priest or nay. This is what you want, Taylor. Right now, apparently I'm not making the best of ideas. Have you got a better idea that, that, that we can come up with in two minutes? Because <laughs> that's how much time we have. Two stones turn. The only alternative is we hope she attends the execution herself and we take her out in the streets like a dog. Her blood will be spilled inside the temple, but significantly riskier, and they're going to be expecting somebody to intervene, especially after our stunt outside. It will take them a little bit to figure out that there is something wrong with the guillotine, at least. Like I said before, killing that woman doesn't sit right with me. Then let's not do it. If it doesn't set right with you, and I don't want to, I don't want to kill somebody who's been chosen by a god. Nothing says we can't tie up somebody chosen by the gods. Buy a bit of time. Confuse and allow some of the others to escape if they can. I believe our time is up. What do we do? I'm saying that's my plan, unless you have another that, that is better. I go. We go in, we take her. All right, so who you want to take with you? I'm willing to go. Well, the things turn sour. 
Sir Guillaume says. There'll be a throng of zealots in there. Yeah, oh, those zealots spill blood. They are mad. They are mad in different ways. You wish me and whoever goes with me to not take a weapon when they may not hold to your sacred pact. Don't speak to me in that way, woman, Sir Guillaume says. If you got Do not judge me! If you got compunctions about it, you can stay behind. I'm going. I'll go. I just hope this isn't fooled, Aaron. So, so I can come up with a plan, but as far as execution goes, particularly when it comes to areas of snaking them out, that's when I'm going to have to rely on your expertise. Do you want me coming with you? And if you do, do you want me to bring any weapon or armor? If we're not allowed to spill blood, then it's best we take those who can stay the quietest. That's not me. If you don't think that you could possibly go unnoticed, then it should be those of us that can. I know myself. I know I'm not good at uh, very many th many things, but even even walking around barefoot, it's just slap, slap, slap. It's just. Should you leave the young woman to these to this mission, Father Bartlesby says, there's no guarantees that the throngs will not raise their weapons and attempt to whip her to death. They've tried. No, I'm willing to go with you. It's just, do you want me with you or not? Okay. Numbers and strength, Sir, Sir Guillaume says. Elisa just kind of puts her head in her hands at this point because her chaos alignment's kicking in, but of incompetence, she goes, I don't know! I say we all go. All right, I'm going with you. Fine. Then let's go. Are you going with? Are if you we're going all going, with? I'll go. If we're not going, I'll go. Are you I'll... staying, Sir Plate? Yes. His evil. job is protect this man. All right, Father Bottles B is my charge. He says. Well, while we're gone, you should get Jonah out of whatever bottle he's crawled into. Father Bottles B says, Jonah is not in the bottle. Could have fooled me several days ago. Well, glad to see he's sobered up for the seriousness of the situation. We worry about Jonah later. It's very possible we may not meet him again, so well, maybe we go now. We should still meet him while we're here. It's 11.45. You look toward the clock nearby. You can hear it ticking and whirring. We do not have time for niceties. We go now. If they have Jonah at the entrance of the tunnel on our way back. We can pick him up. Well, let us ask. Is Jonah alive or dead? I already said he was. He's Father right. Bartlesby nods. He is alive. But... Addled. I mean, for another time, he says. I mean, we know that you've seen some things. Alright, so I'm going to slip out of uh, my mail. Um, now, does this come with a gave us another underneath, or do I just need he, to discard it all? Sir, Sir Guillaume puts his hand on your shoulder. I'm going to remove your armor. He pulls you aside. Look. Father Bottles being a holy man. I respect that. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Things go sour. We will have no choice. He kind of taps his sword lightly. Huh. All right, so I don't take anything off. <laughs> he leans in a little closer. Placate Father Bottles me. Tell me you will not spill blood. I ain't no spilling blood to be had anyway. Do you honestly believe that? No. No, he doesn't. No. But, uh... Bar Father Bartlesby walks up to you. So you swear, in your father's name, you will not draw blood. That you adhere to the to the, to the, to the, to the rights of the, of the Holy Canon, of the Libra, of its tenants, that you will hold these truths sacred? Yeah. Father Bartlesby smiles and embraces you. <coughs> Then go with the steward. Embrace the martyr. You do not befriend the inquisitor, but remember, remember your lessons from your youth, he says, smiling. Everything will be fine. He puts a warm hand on your shoulder. Embrace the martyr, yeah. She's an nice lady. Yeah. 
So, uh, you're <laughs> game three corruption for that lie. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. I mean, we're all party to that. Does that, would that apply to all of us then? I think so, probably. I think so. Shop change numbers. <laughs> Three corruption. I think so. Yeah. yeah. yeah I don't That's plan a fair None of us has spoke up about it. Those are That's rookie right. numbers. Those are Let's rookie go. numbers. You need to bump those numbers up. Yeah. You got a power train in that corruption. That's right. <laughs> Only closers get corruption. How do I have more than I you? I shall stay <laughs> here with <laughs> Father Bottles Good. Leash and anything go amiss. <laughs> Should you need to return, you may do so through here. You know, they take you down deeper inside to this false stone wall. Uh, Eugene walks up to it, and he presses a series of cobblestones into this kind of clunk sort of sound. And the stone wall moves to the side, showing this very, very low kind of tunnel. This vaulted tunnel looks like a like a rum runner's tunnel, like during Prohibition. Hmm. It's not made of earth, but it is of stone, but it's very low for those of crooked back. You can only imagine when this was first constructed, the height of the, of the people who were here. Um, it's about, it fits somebody's comfortable about five foot six. Hey! I'm so super I'm, scrunched over. I'm pretty hungry. Uh, I'm four inches. I gotta duck a little bit. Nope. I, I, just, like, I just like barely tilt my head. I don't even do that. Hi, I'm perfect in here. You're five foot six? Five foot four. Oh, I'm five foot six, exactly. I'm six foot one. <laughs> At least it's like, oh, this is really... So into the tunnel you go. Uh, the tunnel. Did I possibly pick up on the pattern of what he did to the rock? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, go ahead and make an opposed <laughs> education versus scrutinize. This is easy. Uh, that's a six. I didn't get it. Critical fail. <gasps> oh. I didn't critically fail. Not only, though. Not only did you, not only did um, you, not, he, he kind of fumbles several times with the stone presses, and he kind of stops and opens a book to like read what it is. <laughs> I told you I've never been to this tunnel before. Go away. I think by this point, even Harper knows how to open that damn door. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Two up and three across. Now. Sweet. Shoulder height, three from the left. <laughs> he says it out loud. <laughs> At least, could you press down on this one while I get this one? <laughs> I believe it was a, a swift turn and a crouch to hit at knee level. So, you <laughs> go through the tunnel. The darkness. The dot. The yes, The. That's when the sounds. There's this weird kind of feeling as you kind of make your way through them. You're kind of, the walls are a little wet, a little damp, no lights to be found. It's a fairly straight tunnel and you walk for maybe three to four minutes until you come to another wall that's wet and weeping. And then, uh, that's when he produces the key and plays it inside. Clink, clink. The door drops. And you emerge on the other side uh, into what appears to be a, um, a, a fountain against the wall that's pouring over. You can see water kind of pouring in front of your face. And you're actually standing, you have to walk through this kind of low pool where water is going over your head. There's these kind of hanging guard, this hanging grass on either side of it. It's, the water, it's literally a wall waterfall on the inside of this temple, somewhere down below. And it's this kind of low area, like perhaps below the nave. But you can, you know, above you is likely the main worship area where the ceilings are vaulted here and there, and you can see these tall statues, including this massive pipe organ that kind of runs everywhere within this entire building, snaking this way and that. You can hear chanting coming from deeper within, although it's slightly broken. Almost like if it was just sung a few octaves off, or it's sung in the wrong key. Like a, t a piano's been untuned, they're kind of singing in an untuned way. 
and as you kind of wheel around, um, you realize you're just kind of broad so the stairs will wind up to take you up above. This appears to be like an offshoot of the cathedral where we would come down to pray. I believe it is this way. Gesture towards uh, what I know any pathway that might take us to like the where perhaps like the sermon would be given from. It sort of would be given up above, in fact. This is kinda of like if you're if you're in the main yeah, cathedral, but, like But is there like a back way up as opposed to just walking straight up into the middle of everything? <laughs> if you would, for a moment, just move uh, the things off the table there. Thank you. And to give you an idea kind of what this looks like, like from a grid perspective, because I think that's probably important to frame this up. It'll be useful for what we're doing right now, at least. It's kind of like this area where you've got this water wall right here, this kind of reflect reflecting area and it kind of opens up on these stairs here that lead above, and here's a balustrade above or what would look down where you all are at, and then would open up into the main cathedral up here, is what it would kind of look like. So you're kind of down here, down these set of stairs that go about 15 feet up or about 10 feet wide. It's roughly what it looks like. Deal. Uh, Taryn is motioning to you two to. What, like, go ahead? Yeah, I'll join the stealthy group. Yeah. Elisa nods and starts to. So, Elisa, who else will go with her? Eugene. Eugene, and who else? That's it. Okay. The okay. two of you begin to slowly kind of pit pad, pit pad up the stairs. Both of you make secret stealth tests. 49 is my success. Uh, I have 65. I would like to re-roll that. Okay. There you go. Uh, 45 is my success. Okay, so re-roll up. Oh, it's 7. What's your chance for success? I'm sorry. 45. You rolled a 7? Yeah. Can I keep that? <laughs> yeah. 18. A little bit. It's only 6 numbers back. Out of a 49. Right. The two of you make your way up these stone steps very, very slowly. And as you kind of come up around from, seemingly from behind, from where you're at, um, you see that all the pews have been drug out of here. Well, not the pews, my apologies. The, the desks where one would come to study. All of the bookshelves that line these walls, it's not meant to be like a place where we would pray, but you can hear voice, you can hear chanting somewhere within. You hear a prayer as well coming from somewhere deeper inside, you're not really sure where it's coming from. But there is there all the tables have basically been positioned in the center of the room. And in the center surrounding these tables, and upon the table itself, are literally thousands of books that have been stacked about 15 feet high and at the very top of this huge stack of books is this wooden chair and upon the wooden chair is this woman uh, you can tell she's a woman because she has very long hair in the back but upon her face she's wearing a death mask and it looks like a death mask of perhaps uh, some, you're not really sure who it is but it's made of plaster and wood. And she's leaning upon the chair like this as the throng of flagellants are kind of fanned around her as they have two people kind of, or they, sorry, they have nine people that are interlinked with, with chains um, who are standing before her in judgment. They are upon their knees. She stands as such from her chair, and she raises her arm, and before she says a word, her face cranes around behind her to look down the stairs at the two of you, 
and you can see her eyes beneath the mask level toward your own. We will stop here for the night. <laughs> 100 reward points, everybody. Whoa. I couldn't have rolled any better. <laughs> that probably wasn't you. I thought the re-roll 18 was going to be good. You never know. <sighs> She's got God speaking to her. Corruption roll, right? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Some people here got corruption. I had a critical success worth of corruption. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah? How much? 22? 22. Nice. <laughs> so here's hoping that Dan rolls a 1 or 2, right? Whee! So let's, let's talk about corruption for a moment. Mm. So a lot of things happen this evening, and people gained a ton of corruption in some cases. Um, remember that if you have more than 10, you automatically log 1 chaos rank. If you have more than 20, you log 2, and the remainder is rolled against. Yep. So let's do a quick, we'll do a quick count of corruption around the table. So we'll start first with, um, with Terwin. Three. Harper? Three. Lisa? Thirteen. Ooh. Warren? Three. Eugene? Twenty-two. Good That's gracious. right. That, that, that failure on the terror roll was yeah. what we got get the you. Highest. Boom! <laughs> We're number one. We're we number one. We've got a competitor now. Um, so tonight's... Phoenix, like, wait. <laughs> tonight's corruption roll... ...is two. Oh, my God. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. That seems fitting. So yeah, Eugene better. got three chaos three, ranks? Three this? in a game. Ugh. And, I, and I got one the last game, too. I got four. Been here two sessions, got four. Well, I'm going to spend Warren is a good your character. Well, yeah. so <laughs> Warren is a good So yeah. to, to clarify, remember, it's the 100 reward points. So if you have 200 reward points, you may purchase something. Yep. I, I definitely did. I purchased willpower. Nice. Remember, that you can, if, if you're, you can also purchase focuses. And if those focuses are in uh, your favorite attribute, it's half the cost. I am currently saving up for 400, so I can get coordination. That's right. You're doing a... Uh, skill swap. Out. I switched out counterfeit for coordination. Uh, that's right. That's Should right. I go with agility so I can run away faster, or combat bonus so I can maybe try to kill them faster? Uh, agility. Man, because need, of tonight. I need a bronze bonus. <laughs> I'm at three. I was going to go with combat because they were 100 from last session and 100 from this session. I did more combat than running. You do what you do when you do what you do. Yeah, it's true. I do do what I do what I do. What I do. I, I'm at 100 now, so I can't buy enough. Like I said, I'm at three. One more game and I'll have coordination. I could buy a focus, but... I'll bump up that combat bonus. Who knows what will happen? I will probably set up a grid, battle grid for next week. Just in case. Oh, man, so bad. Just in case. What? Mm -hmm. Just in case. Only 40 zealots, no telling how many Templars and squires, and the Inquisitor herself in here. Might have got, got the this. number. Probably. <laughs> what? You think that guy was lying about the numbers? No. What? Did he lie to us? So, uh, to be continued next week. <laughs> Queen of Embers. Patrons, thank you so much for your support. Uh, we're really close to our next goal. We're five bucks away. Mm -hmm. I think we'll make we'll, we'll have all the characters that are current around the table. Uh, we'll have them illustrated by Dan Mandich, and we will release it in Queen of Embers. We'll release it to patrons first for free, obviously, um, along with copies of our character sheets, uh, which we're going to do for free regardless. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll get illustrations for those who are patrons. Uh, so you, if you want to play our characters, you know, it's like see some cool artwork by Dan Mandich, uh, we'll show it to you. Um, anything I'm missing, guys? Girls? Uh, if we hit our them there, so. if we hit our goal, we'll uh, release uh, episodes of Radiator once a week for a month to help us get caught up to uh, the meeting owl that we have at uh, my studio. So yeah. Many, many wonderful ones, but you will be able to see some familiar faces around the table. Yeah. Jason and Mike and Adam. Mm -hmm. Nick and I have children. Yeah. <laughs> and I stream. And Elisa's, yeah, sorry, um, K streams. I was Elisa's stream. Elisa yes. streams as in character as Elisa. It's the strangest thing. Man. 
Mandrake Root. <laughs> oh, she's definitely streaming, man, she's mainlining Mandrake Root at this point. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to go play Overwatch. I'll be back. <laughs> what are you streaming? Recently, I haven't, but uh, I'm supposed to be streaming a cooking stream here shortly. So, if you oh, want cooking. to see Kay on Twitch, where can they find you? Dear God, no. <laughs> Dear God, yes. <laughs> Dear God, no at Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, uh, it's Squiffles underscore underscore because it's really hard to get a name without an underscore anymore. It's right. really on Twitch. Yeah. And, of course, uh, patrons, you know where to get this now. Uh, if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, uh, you can watch Queen of Embers every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central uh, at on Twitch at Grim Perilous Gaming. Pretty easy to find. Yep. Yep. Thank you all so much once again. We Thank will you. see you next week. Bye. 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 It might be the last Bye. episode. Who knows? <laughs> How many fate points do you have? I don't know. For 40 zealots.